Okay, and uh, we are live, or at least we have been for a few seconds, but everything is sorted. Okay, welcome back again, everyone, to the dev plays of Animite Tales, the villain campaign. So, I'll just recap with what happened last time. You all attacked a prison bus. You took a large tanker from the back of that said prison bus after distracting and attacking them. Floating it all the way to a multi-story car park, destroying the back of it, defeating and killing multiple of the uh, jail of enforcement officers, and finally let escape the three jailbreakers. Two of which uh, were not part of the target, but the other one was a man who claims to be known as Dr. Psyche, um, or Dr. Psyche. Uh, a telepath who's also a psychiatrist. Now, he, you have been ordered to take him back. You did so. However, uh, one of your teammates took over the life of a man named Derek. He is out there in the wilderness somewhere, or he is out there living his... Remortgaging Derek's house remortgaging, for money, yeah, yeah, but Potentially, he's ruining the man's life that he has just now possessed. But for the time being, you have been at least let known of this. Uh, veil um, through some kind of burner phone that was most likely destroyed immediately after the phone call had ended. Um, we'll, we'll find out about it on Instagram. What happened. Potentially. <laughs> uh, however, you eventually bring Dr. Syke back to the rendezvous point of which that you hear the rather reluctant doctor say that he would not join without a decent argument towards why he would be brought there in the first place, even despite the fact that he would have gone to prison for the rest of his existence. The butler of the Four Horsemen then stated this claim that ended the last session. What I am having these people do will bring about the destruction of the superhero society. We now come back to exactly that moment where Dr. Psyche immediately stands up and then says, what would you have me do? He then says that he will be bringing him back, but not before he gives the rest of you a mission. He states that it is two days away from now, so you have time to rest and recuperate, but we will be skipping that since no one gave me any information as to what they're <laughs> going to do. However, that is fine, because during that time you have rested and all of your abilities have come back. Um, any of them that required any rests for you to be able to, you know, get them back. Uh, however, they have also given you a sum of money, uh, which they have sent to you in some shape or form, which I will get back to at some point later. But, it is now two days later, and you have finally had contact. The butler walks in to your establishment, your run-down hideout, and addresses all of you. Still no word from Derek, but nevertheless, he states this exactly. It's good to see that all of you are in good health and you've rested up, but now it is time for this Next stage. Are you ready? All right. I just got to change from I my. Uh, I just got to change from my regular jammies into uh, my tactical jammies. <laughs> you know, just give me give me a moment. I'm just gonna like go into another room and put on my dinosaur onesie that I that's been blood transfused. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once you have done that, you come back. He is still standing there patiently. Thank you. Yeah. What's the job? This next one is going to be a bit of a dangerous one, but I'm sure that you can handle it. Nevertheless, here it is. We have found out the location of a specific rendezvous. We need you to go there, infiltrate the location, and steal a briefcase. But that's it? The briefcase contains something. We are asking you three things. One, please do not destroy, damage, or cause any harm to the briefcase or the contents inside. Number two, please make sure that you are not followed 
when you are told the exact location once you have left a specific radius. And three, under no circumstances are you to open that case. Are we understood on these three rules? Got it. We are. Yep. Hmm. Sure. I'm actually quite surprised. You usually give me more resistance than that. Good to yeah. see that you're settling into this role. Things worked out smoothly enough last time. Figure we might as well just keep going with the flow. Yeah, I have more amiibos now, thanks to all that money, so as long as that keeps coming, I'll be sound as a pound. I've heard of those. One of the four horsemen collects the Flintendo <gasps> amiibos. Oh my goodness! Oh, we should get together. Uh, sorry, unprofessional. But yes, but seriously though, we should, we should set up and trade. <laughs> At some point you may be able to meet them, but for now, yes. that is that. <laughs> The location will be sent to your devices. Do with it as you wish, but I will warn you. You will be walking into a government rendezvous. The location has to be secret, but on the bright side it is in a few hours' time, which means that it will be at night time. In the dark, I know that some of you operate greater, so do with that information as you will. It will happen at its precise time and location, however, I'm afraid we do not know where the vehicles come from. So, by that form, you will not be able to do what you did last time and be able to go at it earlier. You can go earlier and case the joint, but I am under the information that there will also be another snag in this operation. Due to the current issues of your previous... heist, there will now be... Two agents accompanying the enforcement officers that usually perform this trade-off. So it won't exactly be an easy task. Any questions? Do you know which agents? Quite frankly, we are completely out of the loop in terms of who it is. Quite frankly, there is actually more than only a few. There's at least 20 or 30 of them. And those are only the ones that people know about. Hmm. You got any, uh, well, tech I guess information? Well, for the worst, then. Yeah, you got any tech information? I mean, I've been practicing my hacking skills, you know, since then. Maybe I could get more info on what we're dealing with. Perhaps you might be able to. However, I do implore you, be careful. The agents are a tricky bunch. And whoever they send, they will be sending the best. Agents are hand-picked, after all, trained and well-skilled. These will not be your run-of-the-average basic enemies. Goons or even okay enough to be enforcement officers. They are highly trained, is what I'm trying to get at. Hmm. How much are we taking home? Excuse me. Right? It's the pay. You're wondering about the pay. Yeah. <sighs> Very well. So far, you have racked up at least 2,000 stars. Do this job, and you'll be given an extra 20 just for this. Ooh. Each. Ooh! This piece of Emphasize. technology is important. So please, bring it back undamaged or you don't get paid at all. Are we clear? Crystal. Then fantastic. As I said, you will be sent the information soon enough. Good luck. And I hope to see you again very soon. With... The suitcase, of course. He then proceeds to leave the establishment. You are alone. Hmm. You have all now been sent the messages, except from... Uh, I'm afraid, Bartholomew, is you still do not have a smartphone. For good reason. But one hey. that will not be explored. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Or should I say, need not to be explored. Continue. Darn touchscreen companies discriminating against skinless people. <laughs> I mean, mine's still a flip phone, let's be honest. 
to say, all right, Grandpa. Yes. You know, Talk yeah, we gotta, kid. we gotta get you some, we gotta get you some flesh gl gloves, mate. We really do. Ooh. You know, this is getting embarrassing. Yeah. Let's see. Mm, research online research, flesh gloves. Hmm. I I'll, I'll, I'll just take one off of somebody at some point, you know. <laughs> what are just the flesh gloves. <laughs> Yeah. You've been told that the location will be in between a bundle of different alley alleyways inside of a derelict district. Actually, funnily enough, not too far away from the multi-story car park that you recently just fought in. Ooh, familiar. Don't think it's a trap, do you? Ah, uh, well, if it is, we can still take them, right? I mean, you just have to, like... You know, uh, open a open a open a pocket dimension underneath them, and then salt shake them all over the city. Yeah, I knew there's a reason I liked you, kid. We are still dealing with agents, though. That's mm. not going to be easy. That's or, true. I mean, if we get spotted, what's the chance they'll recognize us? We're not the most memorable people out there. I. Are, are you kidding, dude? Everyone I, I'm wearing a pajamas. History, everyone, history, roll a history or world knowledge or an intelligence check. <laughs> um, is this to say what I'm I was about to say my, that being recognized would be the worst of or the least of our worries? Y yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay, you can roll intelligence uh, for that. Everyone else, roll uh, world oh. knowledge, intelligence, or oh. history. I'm, to roll I'm, again, then, because I rolled I, I intelligence. Rolled, oh, yeah, fine, I rolled. You can choose. I, will, I rolled roll. intelligence, so okay. yeah, that's yeah. But that's Tenen, right. yeah, it is literally exactly as you said. Like that would getting recognized would be the least of our worries. Whether or not they know us is not the problem. <laughs> they have three guards. Yeah, whether or not they and, kill uh, us is the yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. Bartholomew, I mean, you were playing a pretty slamming concert. If they know who you are. It's obvious that they would know who you are. I mean, come on now. But if they did know who you were, <laughs> it it wouldn't necessarily help them. There's not many. I mean, you're literally that you know of so far. You're the only one of your kind. Pretty inconspicuous, dude. Yeah. <laughs> However, uh, yeah, Sam and Alex roll whatever one of the three that oh, I said. I already. I already did, yeah. yeah. I'm not very five. good. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, no mind. Uh, yeah, no, pretty much, yeah, pretty much the same. But, uh, Blitz Cannon, the only other thing that I'm going to add to yours, then, is just the fact that you say, like, they won't recognize you because you were a sniper the whole time, but literally a kid in a hoodie or a guy in a hoodie did literally lift a giant tanker full of people, and later on a massive beam of condensed dark matter shot through that thing like a cannon of reality the subtlety is not exactly <laughs> what happened in that last mission i mean yes some of you are still potentially faceless and nameless and one of you is quite literally faceless but <laughs> it is still the problem of regardless of who they if they know any of you you are still at a disadvantage considering you don't know anything about them even if they know nothing about you that isn't necessarily always going to be the best thing because you don't know what abilities they have and every agent has a power, at least one. Did you could hack, kid. Hmm. I suppose you could hack into the agency. Well, I don't think that there'll be low security. I mean, I talked myself up a little bit, but I'm still like on hacking for dummies, if I'm honest. <laughs> I can, well, I mean, I can try, maybe get a schedule from them. I mean, someone's got to be stupid. And can I, can I, can I try, can I try it, Joe? <laughs> I mean, should we let them? Should we let? Should we let Toxie try it? It's up to you. Wouldn't that alert them that we're trying to get their data? Mm. But then the data breach. That I mean, my character probably wouldn't know this. So let's put it like, this no, way: I'm... if you would like to, if you'd like to talk the characters out, you can either talk it amongst yourselves or you can roll for it. Whilst that's going on, I'm going to quickly go, just go to the bathroom. So I'll allow oh, okay. <laughs> to challenge All right. yourselves. This is why it's a good idea. This is my PowerPoint presentation. Okay? Like, uh, I Do, just Does Foxy, like, reel up, uh, like, uh, 
like, I don't know, bored or something and just start yeah, streaming I'm... a PowerPoint to it. I'm literally, yeah, I've literally just, you know, got, I've literally just flipped over the whiteboard. It's got a picture of me dressed as a cowboy, but don't ignore that bit. But the main bit is that this is a good idea because I am incredibly confident as my skills. I have five years experience in IT. That's the same thing as hacking into a high security unit, probably. And free, and free hey, why not? Could be fun. See, so yeah, I got three points in my favor already. I'm going to roll the... Uh... Mm. Well, I think uh... it's a great idea. I mean, I'm going to draw intelligence here just to see if I might know. Because yeah, you are a grandpa, I... you can totally. <laughs> okay, I'm I mean, semi, on... semi knowledgeable. 16. On that last point of why not, uh, security alarms, that's one reason why not. Um, could another reason box, why not. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, you do, but that is true. I, I've not learned about subtlety yet. So they will know. Yeah. Polos puts his hand on Toxie's shoulder. You know, I'm, I'm sure if you just go on to our incognito mode, they'll never find you. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, so you, you're put maybe it that's in. not such a good idea, Toxie. To totally trust the skeleton that definitely uses computers, yes. I mean, you know, I think about that as you say that. It's like you don't even own a phone, so it's like, yeah... Yeah, okay, you know. I own a phone, it's just very old. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Nokia, mate. It's like an old Nokia. It was found <laughs> in a tomb. <laughs> just me and Bartholomew checking which phone is older now. <laughs> the Nokia, guess... the flip phone. <laughs> well, I guess we're going into this, uh, I guess we're going into this blind. I guess I could just do a regular, you know, online research. You know of the area and things. You know it won't may not turn up anything good, but at least we won't get detected. So, yes, we are back. Hello, I mean, yeah, oh. they've talked me out of it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I did no such thing. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, we were. I I gave a great PowerPoint presentation, but now I'm just sort of kicking the ground like, oh man. What I had it in the bag. But, and I was mm. so going <laughs> to hack them so good. Yeah. My copy of Hacking for Dummies, half read. <laughs> I, I could make some bone cycles to uh, help us get transportation there. Hmm. Oh, wait. Do we still have the car that Talos stole? Yes. yes oh, indeed. that's true. We can have the car. It is a crappy four-seater, so someone's going to have have to sit in the boot. Right, I mean, well, hey, there you go. <laughs> in you get. I mean, failed. I could always void get you, and I, <laughs> we can drive like that, just the two of us. Also, we don't have the uh, keys for the car. I have to operate it myself. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. But that's Nonetheless, fine. Nonetheless, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Man, that I mean, car we'll is take... so silent. It's almost <laughs> like as if the engine isn't even running. Dumb car. <laughs> Did those wheels turn when it also turned around that corner? You know, I can't remember. It's like it's, it's, like it's clipping in and out of existence. <laughs> you, know entire, it, you know what it is, mate? the entire mate? car just bend around the corner rather than the car just literally just turning around the corner? It just bends around the corner like a limousine. You know what, you know what this is, mate? You know, in space. you know what this is, mate? This, were they just living in the world of cyberpunk 20... <laughs> <laughs> you know Ooh. where the car's just like <laughs> low fruit <boo. laughs> I mean oh that was the lowest fruit oh that was practically underground is but... your back okay for the amount that you uh, amount that you had to actually reach down for that no that was terrible yeah. that was a reach even for me uh okay so you, you, just would, gonna... you could call it a stretch we're gonna move on very swiftly from that one <laughs> um okay so you guys are getting in the car. Uh, you're going to go to the rough location, or whereabouts are you going to go head to? Are you going uh, to go to it directly, or? I, I think we go rough... to the rough location to case it out first. Yeah, not to yeah, but like inconspicuous and stuff. So we're not like gonna be right slap bang in the middle of it. No, no, okay. 
Well, you get we take roughly sniper just advice. outside of it. Um, the lot of you get we'll out of the car. We'll have to park like, around the corner or something. The lot of you get out of the car, and because that it is, it is no, it is now like impossible for you to fail the the gate ability without getting a, a natural twenty, a natural one. I'm just gonna say, through all story purposes, it is now trivialized. So, Sam, you don't have to roll it every single time that you just want to open it or close it in the terms of story purposes. In combat, or in situations that people can fight back or do anything against it, you will have to roll it then. But, yeah, since you can activate it practically unless if you get a natural one, story purposes, trivialized. It's always now going to be a thing where you can at least make it. Let's do it. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, you pop everyone in except from Talos, who then drives you all the way to the location. You get out. And you have a look around, you let them out of the void gate. As you guys are it's looking like, around... It ain't good to it's like, like in an alleyway away oh, from yeah, everyone yeah, else. Obvi- so obviously, just, yeah. so you just see it, this bunch you, of people you just appear from You said inconspicuously, there. so I took it seriously, don't worry. Uh, so as you all looking, sure roll me investigation <laughs> or perception or insight. Either way, let me know which one you're rolling for as and when you're doing I'm it. Roll insight. Okay, I'm Talos, gonna roll... roll insight. Can I roll a perception? You can indeed. Uh, I'm a roll perception. I just suddenly decided to uh, update itself, so that's. Um... Oh, that's annoying. Oh no. Yep, I'm back now. That's okay. Okay. I can investigate. Ooh. I'm just pouring myself Ooh. a lager. I'm gonna roll I'm so insight. Perceptive. Okay, so Talos with a perception, Toxie with an a perception, perception as well. Those uh, are all the same for me, so uh, so I guess I'll go for investigation. Okay, yours was insight. Toxie, yours was perception. Bartholomew, what was yours? Mine was investigation. Okay. Also, all of mine are literally the same. In- <laughs> Who <laughs> rolled investigation? Let's go for this one. I did. It me. It, okay, so you two? Yes, the Americans did. Okay, yes. <laughs> Murica. All right, Muricans. Okay. Uh, with your 18 and 20 on investigation, you have looked through all the possible different routes. This looks exactly identically to the location and picture that you have both seen on your smartphone, but it's canon since you have obviously had to show it to Bartholomew. As you have gone around yes. and walked around investigating through all the different alleyways, different roads that it could go to to lead into this sort of back alley sort of location... You've noticed there are only three exits. When it becomes night time, not only would the shadows uh, definitely grant some amount of clarity, there are only two streetlights that create, well, you would believe anyway, a moderate amount of light. Uh, Nothing too massive. Possibly, if they are not working, they also might be unavailable. But this is definitely oh, the location. Would uh, so it be possible? Slip. Hang on. Two. I'm now going to go to the perception users. Sorry. Who rolled perception? Oh, I did. Okay. What you notice is the same thing as the rest of them. You notice that there are only three exits. And you also notice something else. Uh, there are a multitude of different windows that are overseeing this alleyway in emptied out houses so basically these are like the back alleys between different sort of like residential areas gardens but again this entire place is derelict it's 100% empty so two street lamps three different locations four separate buildings that you could go into or out of uh, depending on uh, where you wanted to go that overlook this street Talos, mm. with your insight and veil, what did you get? I got uh, a 12. What did you uh, roll for, sorry, uh, veil? Uh, inside. Okay, so the two of you, as you're looking around, you have incited only specifically one thing. This place is empty. So it means that no one else other than these five agents are going to see you. There are the that is all, and Toxie, as well as Bartholomew and Blitzcannon, you have all seen this. There are no 
possible way that there are any obvious street cameras, CCTV, or any recording devices. Fantastic. Yes. I think that we should uh, hide in these buildings, and I could do my little battery trick so they can't escape, and then we just pick them, pick them off one by one. What do you think, Assassin Blitzkinen? Uh, is there any way that we could, like, I don't know, uh, pop the light, uh, the street lights? Well, roll me help a out the veil? power knowledge, or roll me a intelligence. An intelligence. Right. Uh, oh, actually, on. I have some power knowledge. You can go go ahead there. But I'm uh, going to specifically only ask Blitz Cannon for one particular reason. You are you, a lightning man, could perhaps do something on the inside of the electronics that could specifically fry them without making it look like as if they'd been shot. Right. Also, okay. if you were to, if you were, if you had the ability of living battery, or if you just specifically tried to phase into one of them, you could perhaps stay inside of it. However, your time limit of your powers is a bit of a problem. You'd have to hope that no yeah. one noticed you detransforming and suddenly being thrust out of the lamp itself. So that's those are two mm. possibilities. There are many others, but these are the only two that you were able to get with the seventeen. On, uh, I'm assuming that was power knowledge. Or was that intelligence? That was power knowledge. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm all for the. Camp in window and shoot them. Strategy. Uh, if there's, let's see. So the the street lights are on two of the exits, right? Uh, the street light is along uh, is along the main street. So there's one main street. It's like a okay. T, uh, like a capital T. So there's right. a long main street. They're either side. They're either well. They're they're on the same side and they're either end. So one is on the left, one is on the right, and they both beam over so that they get roughly around about 20 meters radius uh, from from themselves. So there's about roughly around about 40 meters diameter in total um, that that they cone that they sort of cone together. There's about 20 meters forward that they can also get. The street itself is about 10 meters to 12 meters wide. So. At least a good portion of possibility that two cars could fit down there side by side, with still possibility right. of passengers being able to get in and out. What I'm thinking is if we, like, maybe if, uh, maybe if Talos uses his gravity powers to, you know, uh, create some sort of wall or impediment along the road like the main road with the spotlights we can then make it so that if they try to get out of here they have to go through the darkened area which puts them right into where the veil has home turf advantage hmm. can I ask have I seen the street light like at this point Oh yeah, you know, you see exactly what they see once they sort of roughly point it out, but you don't notice as much as they notice in the terms of like, aha, so that's an advantage, that's an advantage. Yeah. So you, so you, you sure. see what they see sort of thing, but you don't notice, ooh, this is a direct lit place, we can go crazy, and you also don't notice, um, you know, oh, you know, there are, there are, you know, locations that we could hide in. You personally, both you and Talos are just looking, this is a street, it's in the shape of a T, there's two lights. Especially you notice this, okay. because obviously but, your main thing is darkness. Yeah, but just to clarify, these street lights are not, like, airtight and unavailable. They're, like, I'm assuming, considering this is as I said just before a to, As I said before to um, uh, Blitz Cannon, it is 100% possible that these things might not even work. Like, there is a okay. good chance that they might not work. So, yes, they're, a, they're not airtight. Nothing... Here and screams airtight, other than potentially the concrete, and even that's that's arguable. <laughs> can I attempt to to more or less phase in using my shadows, and more or less just cut the wires inside, 
so that the street lamp won't work on both ends. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, roll powers. 26. Yay. Absolutely. You turn into your dark form, go in one of them, uh, and you cut one of them. Uh, okay. You go to the other one and do the same. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you go into the next one, you also do the same. All of the wires are now currently cut. Then I will just blend into the shadows again. Just... Okay. So, what is what is the plan of our great and powerful villains? Uh, the the great and powerful villains will uh, camp like uh, despicable spawn camping scum that we are. <laughs> Yeah, should we go in different buildings or like, you know, stay in the same building? Like, should we get more angles around them? Because, uh... I think... You know. I think we should be in different buildings because that also forces them to divide their attention. Do we exactly. have any idea of what the abilities of these agents are? Mm, not nope. really. Not even no. close. No one has any idea because you don't even yeah. know what the names of the agents are themselves. Do we? How I'm guessing we do you think it would be if I just laid out in the alleyway? I mean, mm, I mean, this is a pretty rough street, but I think they're gonna notice like a skeleton. Like this isn't like a dungeon, you know. It's it it is pretty conspicuous. I mean, unless we like, cover you in garbage bag. You get into a portal. I guess we could like you know you could hide in a dumpster maybe. Or like, or like, you know, I mean, is there like a, a a place that used to be like a Halloween store or something you could pretend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, is, is, is around it... here, sadly. Ah, uh, dang it. Yeah. Good question, though. That might come up. That might come up later. I will find out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that in my notes for the city. Potential. Yeah. Do we have a um, map of the area? Uh, what? Do you want what? Do you want me to make a physical map? Sorry, real quick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, give me one second. Whilst you guys are doing that, you can talk some talk amongst yourselves. I will draw one up real quick. Hmm. Well, I just had a I just had an idea, possible idea, very possible idea. Go on. Let's hear it. Well, considering there's a good possibility. At some point, they'll just put the briefcase down whenever they're meeting. Could just grab it then, and then we don't even have to fight them. I find yeah, that just... highly unlikely if the piece of technology case... is actually valuable. Or, or worst case scenario, if the guy's holding the case, just, you know, don't come into your portal. Mm, that's, that's the problem, though, because we'll have to, like... Well, I mean... We could possess them and then... Gruesomely murder him. That's true, but we'd yes. still have to deal with an agent, though. And still, it'd be it would an be agent. Logic, just agent in my agent. world, though. Hmm. I don't know. It sounds risky. I'd rather you know we get the separate uh case so that we can run with it. Otherwise, we just got one angry, very possibly very powerful agent stuck in your pocket dimension. Oh, if someone can steal the case, then I can at least restrain them to some degree. Exactly. And hey, and, they ain't never get, getting into your pocket dimension. So just put the case in there. Do you make poison gas? Yes, I do. Can you just kill them all with poison gas? I mean, we I could, could try. What we could do... Uh, that might take too we, long. We could, we could create a mm. toxic gas, and since obviously you know, I don't have lungs, I could run in, grab the case, run out, and you drop me in a void, and you know, we escape from there. Well, I can grab the case from a distance, so if someone can simply get their hands off of the case, I can do it with less I, risk. I could make a blackout. Oh, I fill the air with complete darkness they wouldn't be able to actually see or move just grab it there wait i got i got an idea i have an idea like if like i have a, a paralyzing poison like i wait for the guy to carry the case he carries the case 
Uh, I infect him with the gas. He drops like a sack of potatoes. And then you just get the case from under him. Hmm. So you won't be able to hold on to it. That could work. Hmm. And of course, if that goes if that goes wrong, you can all also like uh, Talos can just like you know fling it, you know fling the case towards us. Ah, oh, but we've got to be careful though. We've got to be careful. We can't damage the case or what's inside. Yeah. So we have to be have to be very gentle with it. Hmm. I I could stay in the void and try to make sure the case doesn't get damaged once it's in there. That's true. We may need your musical skills. True. Oh, I think aren't we supposed to be stealthing? <laughs> I mean, uh, are we? There aren't any cameras. Mm. True. And remember yeah, we that. Always go the uh, leave no witnesses. Uh, yeah. Although tactic. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, think they will that's... kill us though. Quite yeah, honest. Think... I wish Arsenal was here because he would have loved to just murder everyone on our path. Oh, Arsenal. He did promise him. <laughs> I know. This would have been the perfect so... scenario. Well, it was his decision to go and, like, you know, ruin that guy's life. I mean... And with our blessing. I mean, yeah. I well, mean, he didn't is. have my blessing, but, you know, I don't give him my blessing for anything, so... Mm. <laughs> it doesn't really mean much to him. But... He yeah. sneezed, I said, bless you. He has my blessing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bony. <laughs> Couple of cards. That's what we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, banter. Humorous. Yes. Tickles my funny bone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Bone puns aside, we gotta, we got to get this plan in order. We got to... I think, yeah, I think, like, the, the first port of call is to pa paralyze the, uh, is to paralyze the guy and open the pocket dimension up, you know, uh, you know, underneath the case. Bish, bash, bosh, we're done, we get the hell out of there. Yeah. But of course, uh, and for backup, we've got, uh, you know, we've got, uh, Blitzkill and sniping abilities and Talos's throw people into walls, you know, at great speed abilities. <laughs> And then and there's me. Me. Soothing music. I am here. <laughs> I mean, you do. You can. You can make people fall asleep. I can it's always try. very valuable. Yes. That's true. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of amazing, really. Like I have actual toxins that force uh, people's bodies to shut down, but through the power of music, you have exactly the same ability. Alrighty then. Uh, I have been listening. Uh, I'm just uploading the image now. So here's how it goes. Uh, pretty much anything covered in an X is a fence. Uh, and it, the circles are the lamps, the lamp, uh, the street lamps. All of the stuff that is filled in with just very crude penciling in is are buildings that you are absolutely able to get into. So these these are the these are the four buildings. So there is an alleyway in between the top ones above the T, and then in between uh, the third road in the middle. Uh, there are also two other buildings uh, either side. Hmm. So I'll give you, I'll give you, the, I've given you that. That's all good. It's not exactly well written, nor nor is it well drawn. But obviously, I just needed to s quick spam, do that. I, I was going to ask, well, well written. There aren't any letters, but then, you know, there's X's all across it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have also cocked it up because. Uh, <laughs> I did the outer line on one of them at the on the on the bottom part of the T. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at least well, you see it. <laughs> at least you see Joe, the face. Okay. Got good news. For once we actually have a consensus on what the plan is. I did hear all of your planning. I just muted myself uh so that the audience wouldn't hear me just I, I scribbling. Kind of... I do kind of agree with Bartholomew, though, because, you know, if anybody's going to go in the pocket dimension, it should probably be him to make sure that the case is safe. And, you know, if accidentally there's someone, you know, one of them falls into the pocket dimension, like, what we could do is, like, you could fight them off. And also, I could just breathe poison gas into the pocket dimension. Yes. You know, Bartholomew's not going to be affected, but that guy probably is. 
That is 100% true. I believe that you are immune to poison? I believe I am, as I do ah, not have you're lungs. Immune to, you're, you're immune to anything that requires to breathe. You don't require oxygen. Nothing that is breathable damages you. Uh, you can't drown. And I believe you can't starve. So yeah, poison gas is fine. Contact poison is dangerous, because obviously contact poison, the way that it works is if it touches you, it starts killing you, sort of thing. I mean, I should say, just so you're aware, you can't actually kill people inside my void dimension. Oh dang. Fair enough. I mean, I can oh, still... The most you can do is really badly hurt someone. And then it I'm just not gets a, I'm not opposed to. Not opposed to that. However, there is another thing that is also actually should be mentioned is that if they are brought in to the gate in a specific state, that is a constant state that they are left in until they are removed. <laughs> so in other words, if they are, if they have their throat slit and they're slowly dying and then still not dead and they're thrown in that, they will survive the rest of eternity in that perpetual motion of bleeding out, blah, right? bleeding out, blah, blah. Bleeding out blood well, and just continuously doing that for the rest of however long that they're put in there until either they are healed outside of that dimension or left to die outside of that dimension. Okay, we're back to are really, we really that badly? evil? <laughs> I mean, we are the bad guys. guys. You they are the really, bad really guys here. These guys are like government agents that are just doing their job. <laughs> uh, I mean, they got families. <laughs> What if they have families? Derek had family, and they're all being either treated better, treated worse, or eventually going to be sold for drug money. We don't know. <laughs> I mean, I really hope he didn't have kids. I don't think what... I mean, yes, he did. Can we roll trauma. for that? <laughs> yeah, roll, have, for... roll for how many kids I'll roll he's going to traumatise. Uh, like, D20 minus... Oh, D4 minus one. Oh, yeah, I'll do D4 minus one. Okay, here we go, here we go. Just for the sake of it, D4, minus one, boosh, two kids. Two kids, man. He's got two kids. Two kids. And, Sweet. hang on a second, <laughs> he's happily married. <laughs> two is going to be either divorced or unhappily married. <laughs> oh, man, this is like the worst case scenario. Oh, oh. <laughs> Of course it's a natural one. Happily married is a natural one. Why wouldn't it be? Yes. Well, no, because it, it, that's the first one. In in, in, my D, in my D2s, whenever I do D2s, it's always the first one is the good one, the second one is the bad one. So who would want to be two? Am I right? It's all about the and ones. It's, it's the it's winners. It's too much. Also two because I put it in my head. Number, as the number one -er. Yeah. Anyway, so um, you guys have come up with your plan... I'm now going to go down the list and you're all going to tell me what your position is at the beginning of this particular scenario. Bartholomew, where are you? What are you doing? Oh god. You started with the one who has relatively no idea what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> I'd say, I'd say... What where are you? What are you doing? <laughs> I'd say, you know, back up for the pocket dimension? Yeah, okay. So you're going to be yeah, in the pocket dimension? Stuff... Yeah, just stuff me in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Blitz Cannon, where are you? What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to be in the bottom left building. Uh, yep, looking out the window with gun in hand, ready to pew pew. Okay, so gun in hand, you have a gun? Yes, I do. What damage does it do? Uh, it does. Gun damage. As in how D12. much? D12. Okay, it does a D12. Okay. I didn't know that you had a gun. I knew you could turn into a gun. I didn't know you had one. Yes. Okay. I will say, Bartholomew is probably going to be attempting to make bone furniture the entire time uh, uh, they're in there. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, Finally. so you are going to be in the bottom left. Gotcha. I will mark there as B K for Blitz cannon. Okay. Talos, oh, where King. are you? What are you doing? Billy, oh. mute yourself. Oh no. He's muted everyone. This is bad news. 
This is the greatest upset that has ever happened oh, in the I history of esports. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to watch that again. Just this is the greatest tragedy that has ever befallen esports. Right, come on, Bill. What is it? Where How wide is the area across? What from uh, the left alley to the right alley? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so if you do that, that's 10. And then... Uh, I'd say about 40 metres diameter, I'm going to say. Uh, 50, give or take. In other words, 40, give or take, maybe 10, maybe 20 at best. If you were dead my, my in the middle, range you'd is have 60. Meters, so I should be fine. Um, yeah, no, you're fine. You're more than fine. I'll be somewhere near Blitz Cannon. Basically, you could be at the back. You could be with Blitz Cannon, and you'd still be able to manipulate stuff down by the the literal center of that. Yeah. T. yeah. Okay. So, the veil. Where are you, and what are you doing? Big is the alleyway altogether, lengthwise. Sorry, say again? How long is the alleyway? Uh, what, the bit at the bottom, or the alleyway that is above like, the T? More or less, how, yeah. All of it. Because I'm pretty much, if it's more than, because I'm just going to stretch out myself so I encompass every single shadow. What's your, I can, I can move, what's your okay, range? 80 meters. 80 meters. Okay, so if you try to do an AoE, in other words, a massive diameter, that is going to be equivalent to half. So, you, in other words, you can span about 40 meters wide. That makes oh, it pretty tough. encumbersome. So, yeah, you could properly get, like, like if, in other words, if you were standing dead center in the middle of this, you would encumber most of this road that was supposed to be shining the light on. Is that what you Mostly because I can... Remember, remember, I can be. Remember, you know the way I can become a shadow. Yes. I can manipulate my body as if under the effects. Oh of... yeah, no, yeah. You can stretch your body, any body part, know. out to like eighty meters. But if you want to make yourself like wide, uh, you can make yourself only half because of the uh, rules of uh, area of effect. So, in other words, if you were to do radius, the radius or in other words, the diameter has to be equal to half. So, in other words, you're... Um, yes, so it basically your radius is equal to a quarter because that's the diameter of 40. So, in other words, instead of being 80 meters, it would be 40 meters, but it would be 40 meters in every direction, if that yeah. makes sense. That's the way I shall be, then. Awesome. So Just you're the gonna, middle. You're going to be from the middle. Stretch outwards. Stretch outwards. Awesome. Nice. Okay. And Toxie. Where are you, and what are you doing? Uh, yeah, I might be in the uh, top top right building. Uh, I think because that's right. that's 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 vacated, and that'll give us more coverage over okay. there. TP. Plus, it's within my range, so that abs yeah. And what is your range? Just to let me know. Uh, eighty meters. Oh yeah, you got. A, you got, they're about fifty meters within your range, so you you're good and clear, even I'm if good. they were. At the bottom of that T, you'd still be able to get them. Okay. This is good music for this, by the way. <laughs> Here we go. Triumphant villains. Okay. So, as you are all preparing, and as you are all placing yourselves in your exact locations, spreading yourself out as a shadow, locating yourself inside of a dark void of nothingness, Placing yourself, mounting a sniper inside of the window of a building that is inside a very derelict location. The creaky floorboards and broken glass is very apparent as you move through it. It is almost too dusty to be able to move without kicking up some amount of horrifying amounts of dust. However, Talos, I assume... Because it is trivial to you, you are floating using your levitation. Yes. Because of that, you do not kick up dust. 
as you mount your sniper blitz cannon, as you ready yourself alongside blitz cannon Talos, as you get ready in the opposite side of the other building, on the opposite side of the road, Toxie, it starts happening. It begins. Mm -hmm. A car appears from Toxie's side of the road. You can hear it, but Toxie, it is too dark. You can no longer see it. Uh -huh, However, but... Vale, you are able to see it thanks to your ability of shadow sense. Yes, I can see up to 100 meters, I believe. 90 meters? Absolutely. Actually, yes. Joe, I have I have a, a, an SPMA that might be helpful in this this regard. Mm -hmm. Uh I, we remember we came up with the use of stub poison corrosive detective, where okay. I could detect their stomach acids, or I could detect the car battery. Go ahead, roll it. All right, so that's perception and then SP. So okay. I'm gonna say D twenty plus next D twenty plus six. Which is the fifteen or above, by the way? Oh, that's the fifteen one. The 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 perception, uh, and then the, it's a plus ten for the SP, oh, so it's like... No. Oh, oh dear. The rookie mistake has been made. It's in the Why wrong was... chat. <laughs> what? Oh, shit! Sorry! Oh, oh man! man. <laughs> this is not a good start. Oh, this is uh, terrible. Sorry, sorry, I was can... looking at the map. For those of you who cannot map, see, uh, we have one rule in the terms of the dice no. roller, which is if you place it in the wrong chat, in other words, in not one of the bot commanders, it does not count, no matter how good or how bad. Great. Like roll your dice <laughs> that does not work. Doesn't work with an eight. Doesn't yeah, work. it's like rolling the dice off of the table. Yeah, exactly. So, well, well, never mind then. That does not work. You do not know. However, Vale, you sense them coming, and you even feel them roll over your face as they get up to where the street <laughs> lamp should be. Their lights stay on as their lights are on the funk setting to completely shine a light through whatever is going through it. Now obviously as that happens you feel the light go over your darkness. I make a hole in myself. Okay. What, Dude, so, like where the light shines. Yeah, so, it's so sort of like, like as if it's a shadow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, to make huh. it work somewhat. Yeah, okay. I definitely wasn't prompting you to do that. <laughs> Yeah, but no, yes, I would. I, yes, I would, <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. I was going to wait for you to finish narrating first and then I was okay. going to say that, but I was unsure. I didn't want to interrupt. No, that's fine. That's fine. No, that's you, don't, okay. you don't, you don't. It's, it's do. manipulation of your own body, you're fine. As you open up, as you open up yourself just to sort of peer open, the, the lights shine and whoosh. As the, as the, you hear some sort of mumbling and moaning, sort of just going on like, oh. As then the as then the guys open as I'm just saying, all right. He should have been here by now. Like we should just make this journey already. I don't know what you're talking about, honestly. At least we got an agent with us in that right nerve. Uh, sir, Agent Nerve, you getting out of the vehicle? The back door of the uh, car, the light back door opens. All right, lads, come down, calm down, as he shuts the door. All right, what we're going to do now is we're just going to wait quietly. Okay, thank you. All of the doors close. I'm just saying, we only have, what, a couple of minutes window? He could have been, like, right here, right now. All right, okay, your 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 complaining is not helping. Okay, we're right in front of an agent. Look alive. Show him what the JEOs are meant to be about. All right, whatever. As the darkness really sets in, Nerve then states, "I think this is a bit uh, too much darkness, even for my liking." I don't like it. I thought these street lamps were supposed to be working after a certain amount of time. Yeah, they're probably broken. <laughs> Typical, right? Ugh, just my luck. Look, it doesn't matter. 
Right. We've got guns. We've got the lights on from the car. All we have to do is wait another five minutes. It's fine. Right, sir? Yeah, sure. Whatever you want, lads. It doesn't really matter too much. Besides, the agent with them is uh, a little bit of a tricksy bastard. But he would never let this thing go. It's a shame that I was assigned to this post, to be honest. I actually really wanted to go off with Agent Skull to assassinate one of those tricksy bastards off in Imjanal Linea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, okay then, I guess you don't. Yeah. Just the time... For following you may not be able to hear it. The name Agent Skull. <laughs> <laughs> he, he almost feels it in, in the ounces of every fiber and molecule of calcium inside of him. Oh, my like. bone senses are tingling! <laughs> <laughs> I must make pun! <laughs> Although, that is a good point. Uh, can only uh, Vel hear them? Or... Uh, roll perception, everyone except from Vale and uh, Bartholomew. The main reason is because that veil you are literally underneath and around them, <laughs> and yeah. Bartholomew, you can't hear them because you're technically in another dimension. <laughs> my, yeah. and I've got a new power that allows me to hear anywhere my shadow touches anyway. I mean, you should be able to anyway, because you're basically yeah. the equivalent of a mimic. It's worth so that I'm this. furthest away, okay. and yeah, I rolled the highest. Okay. With my perception. Well, that's good. Talos, you can hear it, and Toxy. You can definitely hear it. Uh, as you hear every ounce of this conversation, you now know of Nerve, and Talos, you also do. Toxie, do you convey this information, or do you stay quiet? I'm staying quiet. Okay, I'm Talos, right are you going to convey this information over uh, the headphones, or are you going to convey this information at least to the person that you're floating next to? Or are um, you going to stay quiet? Uh, would there be any chance that I would know anything about him? Uh, like roll world knowledge world with knowledge. disadvantage and Toxie roll world knowledge. I'm going to say Vale, you can also roll world knowledge. Just for those well, who are wondering, well, Blitz Cannon well, only got a 7. Don't mind me, I'm yeah. just creating bone furniture down in the void. Okay. Wait. Oh, man. You make a, a grandfather clock made out of bones. <laughs> vale, you are you don't know if you've heard them, but obviously they're an agent, so that's difficult enough. Toxi. Uh agent. Difficult to under understand exactly who or what they are, but obviously they're an agent and their name is Nerve, so any info would probably either be in their name or probably not. You're not entirely one hundred percent sure. Talos, on the other hand, you feel like you've heard that name before. As a matter of fact, roll willpower. Uh, Not my willpower. That's pretty damn weak. Let us see what Talos gets as his hand begins to thump. He sees pictures of a man dressed in the black and grey cloaks of the agency. His name was Nerve. They called out for his name as they placed him into a cargo holder, a tanker. They called him Nerve, Agent Nerve. The only thing that you ever heard or saw was his face and his accent as he said to you one phrase you'll be going away oh you'll be going away for a long time lad it's a shame that you never awakened would have liked to try my hand at fighting you myself tough break tough break indeed as your flashback ends that is the only information that you have on him. Staring now, intensifies. Staring intensifies indeed. Now, as you continue, 
four minutes later, five minutes later, six minutes later. Eventually, another load of lights shine as you sense tyres. Uh, about 50, maybe 40 metres away. No, 80 metres away. It's nowhere near your shadows yet, but the lights will be pointed on them soon enough. Well, once again, I will manipulate myself so that it looks normal. That's, you know, it doesn't look, so it doesn't look weird whenever the lights shine on me and there's still darkness. Roll me. Whenever the light hits, I will shrink away. Roll me an SP for this specific one. That's 25. That is a 25. That is so damn beautiful. As the lights shine on oh. you, nobody knows, notice, notices or knows, knows anything. For a millisecond, everyone who is watching this even completely forgets that you are there. They completely forget that the veil is even there. And they know that you were there beforehand. They, they were told, they saw you, but even they completely forgot just for a second that you were the shadows all along. That's how nice great one. this role is. Nice one, old man. Wonderful. I can't see it, obviously. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> it's like, is he a shadow? <laughs> as, uh, as this new car comes into place, the two doors either side open and two people leave. As the lights are now shining at each other, making almost a pyramid of perfect beam, all five of them stand in front of each other, in front of the cars. You know, I've been waiting for this a while now. You made me wait almost ten minutes. <laughs> Alright, man, whatever. <laughs> the last thing that you could do is at least act like as if you're a professional. Come on now, Digit. And over the case. I need to get this back before the heads start rolling. <laughs> I see what you did there. Because, <laughs> the, you know, <laughs> the government heads. <laughs> Why is no one laughing? <laughs> As he then shoulder barges or elbow barges the uh, poor jail <laughs> jail enforcement officer next to him. Come on, laugh! As he nervously asks, ha 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 Good one, sir. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so should I uh, go get the case, sir? <laughs> no worries, I'll get it myself. <laughs> so, uh, this is how it all uh, goes down, is it? As he walks over and goes to the boot of the car. He opens the boot, and he then hears a click as he places uh, some kind of handcuff to himself and to the object as he walks out and closes it. So... What a crazy day this has been. I mean, three days ago, a jailbreaker, and now I had to fight one of them? Oh, man. Uh, I let him go, of course, but uh, officially, uh, he was supposed to have overpowered me. But, you know, whatever, man, whatever. Ah, yes, I believe I know him. Isn't that the hammer? Avoid... No, a nano one child, if I'm right. Crazy strong. Well, you see, I fought him yesterday, but the uh, the problem is, is that a uh, humorous took him on, and it was a close battle. Really, honestly, he took some hits. I saw some of his body; it's a bit messed up. But oh boy, I really enjoyed that fight. All right, you crazed lunatic, just hand me over the damned thing, and let's just get it on. Okay, I'm about I'm about to make my move. Quick question, by the way. Uh, can we all hear everything that's being said? Or yes, do have because to this guy is practically shouting it. Okay. I, mean, I can't uh, hear it, but you know. Can, <laughs> yes. Uh, can I make a world knowledge check to recognize the name Digit? Absolutely. Real quick, I'm just going to go and do something just to make sure mm -hmm. that it's I all sorted out. Do the same. Uh, yes, everyone well, roll world I know, knowledge. I know nothing. Uh, I need to use uh, the bathroom. I'll be right no, back. World knowledge, eh? Okay, that's a free. Probably know I need nothing. to do that. Oh, well, I know nothing either. Dang it. I need more world knowledge, man. I need to be more book learning. Nerd world knowledge. <laughs> Despite not being there, I'm going to roll it as well since he said everyone. <laughs> it's just sort of like, you know, uh, you just sort of like you're just making bone furniture and you think. Ah, digit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I've I've gone through a grandfather clock, a table, like a full tea set, and a rocking chair. Well, I hope you're prepared, Bartholomew. You. You're about to get a special delivery because this guy's handcuffed himself to the case. Yay! I'll make a, I'll make a bone fro pillow. <laughs> <laughs> bone fro. That is the most. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. This is this this is gonna complicate matters. <laughs> okay. Are you, st- are you still gonna paralyze the guy? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. This is what I was gonna roll for. I'm just waiting for everyone to return. It appears it's in the void. To... It's just it gonna be... sure... <laughs> okay. no, I was gonna say it's gonna it's gonna be puns back and forth. <laughs> because <laughs> could you make it so it, it's very so he can't move at all and but he's still awake? So it's just oh, him yeah. lying there while he's making a lot of puns. He's like, ah, I, why can't I die? That's literally going to be it, to be honest. I mean, that's all I can do with my, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Use must roll 15 okay. puffs to generate a poison or substance that numbs the contacted areas. This means the target affected must uh, uh, must roll with additional demodifier or strength of two equal amounts. So, like, Basically, I mean, if I was to, like, create a numbing sting poison and, like, in the air and just, like, you know, put it in his lungs, would that, like, paralyze, you know, his internals? No. Or would I just uh, have to do his Is it supposed to demodify one of the specific stats or is it supposed to demodify whatever it affects? Uh, I think it's whatever it affects, actually. Yeah, it, to num- numbs the contacted areas. Okay, uh, so if he if he breathed it in, it would mean all of his endurance and any lung based like breathing based survival rolls would be demodified. Meaning that, like, if someone like tried to drown him, or someone tried to suffocate him, or even say, for instance, if he had to like, you know, if he was starting to breathe heavily, he would be at a massive disadvantage. Um, I'm now just going to have a look. So, okay, so Talos, you got an 11. Toxie, you got a 7. Uh, Nerd Wallage, Blitzkrieg, uh, Blitz Cannon. I mean, I don't know if that necessarily counts as a roll. <laughs> no, uh, Bartholomew, again, sorry about that. Yeah, what I meant yeah, was I everyone except from Void people. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. Blitz I did Cannon, it for fun. <laughs> roll a Nerd Wallage. I did, it was a 5. Oh dear. And I'm assuming Vale that yours was the two a ten. A veil? Oh. Has he has he gone to the toilet? Oh he's moved. Uh, but yes, he since he was the ten. Okay. So uh I was just going to say Hughes was okay enough to know that that is an agent. Talos was also uh, okay enough to know that that was an agent, and sadly Bartholomew, that was a great role, but <laughs> you don't know who the fuck this is. <laughs> I'm completely oblivious because I don't even know that there's someone else. <laughs> yes, so uh nobody knows who this digit I'm... is. As they as they sort of like do this, um he he dis he they put each other's hands together. He disconnects using a key the handcuff. I'm only saying this for Vale's sake, because I assume that Sam, you're now back. Oh, yes, I'm back. All of you, except from Bartholomew, roll me, uh, except from Bartholomew and Vale, roll me a perception to see if you see this. Because Vale, yours is like dark sense. It's just happening. You feel oh. it in your soul. Uh, okay, Blitz, Cannon, and Toxie, you see this as he dis- digit disconnects the handcuff and he then goes to reconnect it to the agent known as Nerve. Well, in that case, I'm gonna. Well, I guess, like, the, if he's, like, reconnecting it, I'm going to, like. Hmm. Which is the better move? Shall I, like, inebriate him so that he, like, staggers or. You know, just numb his arm that's holding the case. Uh, this is something that no one else should be able to answer, only because that yeah. this is in your mind and meta. So, no one answer that question. You know what? I'm going to numb his arm. You know, with the uh, thing because I've got. I know where. He, I know where he is. Who's specifically? Uh, the guy that's holding the case. Is it Digit? Digit is currently holding the case. He's now passing it over to Nerve. Like literally, their arms are like 
centimeters apart. He's just literally he's disconnected it, and he's now mo- with his other hand. He's now moving the other half of the cuff over to Nerve. Well, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to do digits. I'll see if he can drop it. Okay. Let's try that. Plus seven. Okay. Come on. Oh come on. <laughs> Oh. Is, is that your shot? Yeah. Okay. It's that that's not enough for numbing sting. Oh, okay. So you're just shooting poison. Yeah, I guess okay. so. Is it is it visible? Poison. As, wow. as, you, as you shoot this poison, all of a sudden it just the a tidal wave of blackness just comes up by the side of them. As then he then just like like you don't see any of this, by the way. Uh, not only Bartholomew, but you don't see any of this toxic. From now on, any of the rest of you, you see this. In fact, Vale, you feel this as darkness has just moved up, blocking the poison as it's it's part of you, but thankfully it isn't actually you, because normally you would take poison damage from this. As then darkness is just lifted up, blocks the poison shot, and then... Then Digit just looks over and is like, what the hell is that? As then he then claps, clasps on the heart handcuff, it is now connected to Nerve's hand. It seems as though we're uh, under attack. Did you seriously not notice that there's a void child right below us? I mean, honestly... Okay, I just... what, when he says this, can I just quick, can I just void gate the, the, the agent? Which yeah, one? Yeah, he's holding it's... the case. Yeah, because, let's be honest, we've gone loud. <laughs> okay, fair enough, go for it. We've got, we've yeah. gone loud. I wanted to, can I see your roll first, just so I, just so I know what to beat? Uh, okay, okay. Things are getting a bit nervous. Oh my god, no! Holy you can't fuck. open the portal. No! As you attempt wait, to open wait, the Wait, 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 I have practice! I have practice for this! No, but it's advantage, it's not real. No, the advantage? Yeah, but you, you have to... I'll allow yeah. it. I'll allow it. Go on. Did you have advantage? Was that road advantage? Use void gate once per day. Yeah, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Because uh, please don't give me another one, you damnable bot. No, not enough. Oh. <laughs> as, you, as you open a gate underneath him, he then like almost like jumps off of a tiny bit of the d- darkness next to it, and then. With his other hand, he clasps his hand as the void gate disappears. As he then lands back on the solid ground that he then pushes open so that there's no blackness underneath his feet. (laughs) Whoa, I didn't notice that. Blackness, Mimic? No. You said void child, right? That's crazy. (laughs) Whoa, right. Nice. So can I make, like, a power knowledge check or something to try and guess what its powers are? Absolutely. You and Vale and Talos are allowed to do so. Did did Rafalmi see the void open and close in front of him? He saw it. Like a pocket dimension, like a portal (laughs) open. Oh, hey. And then it just closed again instantly. Blitz cannon, you, you... There's three powers that this could be. Either this guy is a dark energy manipulator, a void child... Uh, sort of, you know, so to speak, either a void child, a dark energy manipulator, or he is someone who has amalgamation somehow, or he has somehow gathered the ability of superpower manipulation. So he's either someone who can copy powers, someone who has the exact same powers, or someone who has the ability to control powers. There are only three or four possibilities as to what this guy could have. As for Talos... He seems to have similar abilities to Vale, and Vale, this motherfucker just closed your gate. This is either nullification or he has the same powers as you do. I mean, it seems like it. Uh-oh. Just going off the name, it feels like, you know, activate a nerve to force someone to use their powers. Matter knowledge. I gathered. <laughs> either, I it, it will either help <laughs> them or hurt, hinder them. Either way, meta knowledge. <laughs> Not in general. But... <laughs> I, cl- I clicked the wrong one. I was supposed to click uh, narrator roles. Sorry, continue. Whoopsie, never mind. So, I think we're going loud now. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Certainly I mean, sorry, sounds like that... it. 
as soon as that that poison like darkness like you know that you know nullified my poison i was just sort of like what the hell and it's like uh oh uh oh <laughs> okay i guess i just guess we're killing everyone again whoops whoopsie yep. daisy <clears throat> whoopsie daisies uh so since we have warned about the device being really fragile or anything or they just said not to damage it they just said not to damage it they didn't say because no one asked anything about it so no one really even knows what this is I mean, we were also told not to open the thing, so yeah, presumably so we're not supposed to know. I mean, yeah. it's just a MacGuffin, let's be honest here. <laughs> it's it's the Pulp Fiction case with the gold glow in it. Yeah, you don't want to know what's inside. No one you cares what's inside it. We, Who knows it's just there because we need so, it. So, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, in this particular case, all of you can either shout out and whoever gets first go first come first serve or you can all just roll move speed and see who is fastest to act I i'm um, gonna use move speed i think yeah, yeah, roll move speed because okay. i don't already know where i want to go in the voice well uh, you voice. can't get to roll move speed then poor poor old you but you'll be useful oh. later oh no could, could, could i roll to see how many bone objects i created <laughs> So uh, hang on a second. My move speed rolls are always awful. All right, Sam. Shall we have a roll off? Okay. We'll do it. You, me. What do you want to do? What do you want to roll? Why does everyone have really already done it? Let's go D one hundreds. Oh God. <laughs> okay, I got twenty two. Fuck me. You okay, win. all three of the officers get two, so they're the least. Uh, okay, so Blitz Cannon is going... Wait. Okay, let's have a look. I'm okay. going first, yeah. Sam and I had a roll-off. So, Digit is going first, then it is then Blitz Cannon, then Sam, then it is Nerve. I'm just trying... I'm just gonna quickly try and write this down, because this is a... This is a big one. Uh, okay, so... Uh, I don't know why we bother trying to do stealth anymore. We're just not that very good at it. It honestly we? could have worked really <laughs> well had it not been. I like, know. I randomly rolled for all of these dudes, and just so happened to be that this one was the worst to fight you guys, or at least one I of know. them was. Okay, I don't know so... what you're talking about. They haven't spotted me yet. So, <laughs> did you then blitz I mean... on? Digit may have seen you in the brief moment the portal was opened. I'm just imagining you just ow. got up. <laughs> oh no, they're just gonna gather from a skeleton. <laughs> just... Oh, they're gonna send us to the skeleton dimension, man! <laughs> Game over, man! Game okay. over! Uh, Blitz Cannon, then. Uh, it was Talos. No, uh, Veil is after me. No, uh, sorry, Blitz Cannon, Veil, Talos. Uh, sorry, I, I, I wrote it down. I hadn't said it out loud, sorry. Blitz Cannon, Talos, uh, Blitz Cannon, Veil, vale, Talos, Toxie. Yeah. Then the agent. Then, yeah. uh, no, then the no. JEOs. Oh, JEOs, yeah. Uh, right, so Digit is first, as he just places his hand onto the ground, and. He's just all up in that darkness, just swelling his hand up in that cookie jar. As, uh... I'm gonna roll for something. Something fierce. Okay. As... I roll against that. <laughs> I mean... You can try to... Okay, you you move your darkness, but he touches the ground. So I mean, either way, you stop him from touching you, or at least your darkness. Yes. Uh, but as you notice something, 
He then, the floor just suddenly disappears beneath him, like a little hole disappears underneath his hand. As he then just goes, Oh man, I really wanted to see if that worked. And that is the end of his turn. As it is now the turn of... Blitz Cannon. Me! Uh... Me! Go on. Right. Um... Clearly they are both very dangerous. I feel like right now uh right now I would say probably nerve feels more dangerous because he's either got the same abilities as Vale, which is a nightmare, or he's got ability nullification, which is even more of a nightmare. So I'm going to try and blam him. Um so, it's an accuracy roll to uh, hit with um, with a sniper rifle, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so that's a plus six. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, uh, right, awesome. I shall attempt to roll. <laughs> How does one knit a bone scarf? As uh, as like you fire your bullet, it just gets grabbed by darkness, and then just like pinged away as like a tidal wave of blackness just like knocks it away, just at the exact moment that's supposed to hit him. Yep, same abilities as fail. However, you'll notice that his body is not yet darkness itself. And he didn't even look in the direction of which that you fired that bullet. So what you're saying is he doesn't have he doesn't have amalgamation. Vale, it is now your turn. Well, it's time. More or less, like, like I don't want to say, like a like a carpet being lifted. The shadows just pull inwards. As the, the figure of the veil like protrudes upwards in front of is it nerve or digit that has my powers? Oh. I'm confused by that. No, nerve is one of them. the one who specifically seems to be stating as if he's the one who's controlling this. Digit seems to have been the one who just absorbed parts of the gravel underneath you. Okay. But he has the case, which is what I need. Yes, Nerve is the one with the case. I'm going to stare at him. I'm just going to manipulate my darkness to fall underneath him so I can then do a portal gate. You think you can control the darkness that I do? A ball's wrong, th wrong, wrong thing. Oof. Oh no! Oh, Oof. My would, guy. would have succeeded. Oof, my guy, that would have been that would have been a beautiful, beautiful roll. But oh oof, no! Indeed. Oh no! Please. Oh. What's your roll, yeah. Sam? What's your roll? Fourteen. Still uh, work. I mean, that's still not. Work. He could still botch this. Yeah, he could still botch this. Still easily botchable. But he doesn't. No. As oh. you like, do this. He just moves the darkness around. Just dissipates you as you just go around and back onto the floor beneath him. I really thought you would work it that time, lad. Uh, I really thought, felt the strength from within you. But the only problem is is that uh, you're not that good with it yet. As we come to Talos. What is it that you will do? You are still next to um, Blitz Cannon, who has just fired his first shot from his sniper. So what will you do, Talos? Don't forget to unmute. Because you seem to keep forgetting that you're muting yourself. Oh. Oh no. How did they react to the um, shot that he fired? Uh, he just knocked, like, he just knocked it back with uh, some darkness. He didn't look off in his direction. Like, his body didn't move to look up and look over mm, to you. I have things I want to do, but I'm worried about destroying that suitcase. 
which is kind of awkward. That's part of the challenge, my guy. They do still have a car, though, that they're standing... Wait, they're, there are two cars on them. They're standing in front of both of the two cars, yes. Okay. Uh, hmm. I might as well start by trying to activate... Because uh, I don't know if I will end up succeeding, but I might as well try and activate telekinetic skin. Okay. Moo-hoo ha 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 Mwa ha 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 Nope No, okay um, So that failed, but you still have a roll left I don't want them to know too much what if I just started lifting the suitcase into the sky? You can try. Roll for it. I will well just see what happens. Nope. No. Nothing happens at all. As you try to use your powers, you then suddenly, like feel your entire body just slam up as you smash up against the ceiling. Uh, as you do so... As you do so, you take... Oh, shit. 12 points of damage. But my powers didn't work. Just because that they fail does not mean that they do not work and they cannot be well, reacted against. Especially in this particular way and form. Okay, so you've taken 12. That does not break your vitality. Okay. And so it is on to the JEOs as they pull out their guns. Oh, no, wait a minute. Is it oh, Altai first? Shoot. Right no, it is Toxie, sorry. Toxie first. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. I got a me. three oh, with my geez. dudes. Go on. Yeah, just, just beat him. Uh, I guess, like, oh, geez. Uh, well. Mm. The other guys have got him. I don't really know know exactly what to do, but I guess I'll just release some some poisonous gas. You know that will, uh, you know that will uh, inebriate people. So at least if they're like going to like, they will at least be, you know, they'll at least be at a disadvantage. Okay. Okay. I'll re I'm aiming mainly towards the. Uh, uh, not Nerve, by the way, because, you know, I, I I don't think he likes me. So, uh, the main guys, it's mainly just the uh, the other people. Ooh, the GEOs and the uh, and Digit. Okay, they're all within close proximity of each other. Yeah, so that will be, that's great. They can all, like, take this gas in together. Please, please, please. Oh, just, oh, not inebriation. <laughs> not inebriation, but... Having a good day, are we? As as you sort of like create your poison to do so, like as it comes from you, it then immediately starts just like filling the room that you're in, and only the room that you're in. You feel like as oh. if your poison gas is just being pressed against something. As we come on, as we now come to the JEOs, they point their guns immediately off in the directions of which the sniper. Uh, fire came from as they attempt to blindly open fire this is 3d 20s plus 5 the two of you must dodge a 23 a 19 and a 14 you can right. choose to dodge I'm going to say you can choose to dodge once or three times, but you have to tell me before you do so. You, uh, in other words, meaning that you can react once, but that means that if you fail it, you will be hit by your three. Or you can react three times, but it means that obviously you'll be rolling for three separate rolls, which can also potentially neutralize your possibility. Even if you get a good roll, you'll then have two potentially bad ones. Or even if you get two, 
I have three potentially bad ones. And it will go in the exact order of which these were rolled. 18, 14, and 19, which were buffed by plus five each. Okay. Um, what is what is it to dodge? Just dex? It is evasion, acrobatics, or finesse in most circumstances. In this particular circumstance, it will be evasion, because the, obviously okay. the two of you are very far away and you can't exactly... Do we... Do we not get any bonuses from the distance, the blindness, or, like, having cover from the building? You won't necessarily get bonuses from the cover. I'd say you get advantage. Okay, what does advantage mean? Just means uh, that you roll twice on any separate okay. roll. So you can roll twice once, or you can roll uh, twice three separate times. Okay, so I'm gonna... To go first. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna roll twice, three separate times. Okay, roll for it. This is to beat the twenty-three. So go. And this is again evasion. Uh, so that's an eleven. That's a six. Uh, just put two d two d twenty next time. By the way. Okay. Uh, so no, so you get hit by that. Next one is 14 plus 3, so that's 19. I'm afraid you get hit by the third one, and uh, second one, and let's see about the third one. Roll again. 2d20 plus 3. Yep. You definitely, First, now I... <sighs> definitely get that. You're allowed to also pop off a shot if you would like to do so, because you do have I... a ranged weapon. I would like to do so. Roll yes. damage. Just damage, not uh, accuracy? Uh, no, you, no, no. Because you've got a ranged weapon, ev evasion allows you to use range-based attacks just straight up thanks to a counter-attack. And because you got okay. way above the roll before the opponent, then yeah, you get to do damage. Okay. There we go. So, you get hit by that. Bill, or aka Talos, roll either once for all three times or three times for all three separate rolls. Again, you get to roll advantage because that you are behind a building. Um, I guess I might as well try to return to send three times. Very well, roll it. Again, you Ooh. can roll advantage three times thanks to that. Uh, yes, the first one succeeds. Wait, no, the first one does not succeed. I mean, that succeeds anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, the second one succeeds. No. And now for the third know. and final one. Damn it, stupid cursor. And yes, you succeed on that one as well. Okay, so... I will roll for all three of the separate damage dice, uh, and then obviously, based on the ones that you failed, just add up those three separate ones, and then let me know how much damage that the two of you take in total. Here we go. So, rolling them now. Uh, here we go. First, so this is the first roll. Boosh. Second roll. Boosh. And third roll. Boosh. It's a good thing that the most accurate was the least damaging. That is true, yes. So, 5, okay, 16, so... 6. So I take 21 damage. Okay. Th since it is from... And that that does break my vitality. Uh, well, I was actually going to say, since it's from two separate attacks, you don't have to worry about that. Ah, oh, actually, you know, yeah, your vitality is 10, never mind. So that one is 16. So roll me fortitude whilst I just jot down. You take 21 damage. Okay. That's a fail. I have a wound. You do indeed have a wound. Here is your wound, sir. You are bleeding. 
for three points of damage, and it will last for the next three turns as you have taken four extra points, uh, three extra points of damage. Now on twenty-four points of damage in total, you have three points of health left, my guy. Yes. And, uh, can I staunch the bleeding? <clears throat> not directly now, but maybe on your turn if you find okay, a way to that's stop good. Talos. As for you, you are currently. How many of those hit you? Was it only the first one? Yeah. Okay, so you take five points of damage in total, and you send both of those back. Are you Since that you have got both of them at such a good range of capability, are you sending both of those back to the same people each yeah. time, or one person in total? Um, no, I think I'll just send them back to the same people. I mean, they'll probably... Okay, so one guy takes 16, which I now have to roll for his fortitude. Which is... Plus two. Okay, nice. Uh, he does not take injury, and the other guy takes six. Okay, nice. All right, awesome. As like a bunch of bullets like fire out of their guns as they go through and back into them. Now, I do have to say this. Um, blitz cannon. Both of those guns were also infused with something a little bit special. And Talos, you take instead six points of damage, which is fine, because there's only one point extra. However, Blitz Cannon, instead of the normal 21, you also took a little couple of extra points. So you are now on one point of health as you took 26 oh no. in total. Cool. Something in those bullets really frickin' hurt you. As we now come back to Digit. So is As he gonna pass out next round then? Whenever he bleeds out? Potentially. He'll have one he'll have two actions before it bleeds out because again it's only on the round that it started, so the GEOs they get ah. to it's on their turn that he starts bleeding, because it's on their turn that it started. As Digit then just sort of looks around and just goes Okay, so where did the first attack come from? Come on, come on, you gotta tell me. You gotta tell me, come on. As as pretty much Nerve just says, Alright then, you want to know what it is? As he then lifts up his hand that is holding the case as he points over to the building that Toxie is in. <laughs> punches his own fist as he clenches it in his hand. <laughs> Thanks! As he launches himself directly towards that building. Toxie, oh, no. you can either react now or react later as this is only his first action. Okay then, well, uh, I think, uh, you know, I don't quite know what to do so I'm just going to make him throw up. <laughs> okay, you will roll that and I will roll this, which mm. is... Oh no, this ain't good, bro. <laughs> Can I react considering he's jumping away from me? Uh, you can do so, but because you'll be doing that, Nerve will also be allowed to react to you, since you are literally on on under him. Well, that ain't good. <laughs> me reacting to you, reacting to him, reacting to them! So as you attempt to react, you're stopped, Vale, and as Toxie, you attempt to do something to him, he smashes straight through that building as he now is skidding slightly on the floor as his punch just smashed straight through that wall as he then turns around slowly, only his neck as his head rotates to look at you. Hey there. As he then immediately jumps towards hitting you. I'm afraid since you already reacted beforehand, you're not allowed to react to this. Oh no. Oh no indeed, as he rolls for his attack. This is a usage style, so I will be rolling twice. Okay, let's have a look at the requirements. That is fine, okay. As he lands the attack, he does this much damage to you. Mm. <laughs> I don't take eight. damage very well. Oh no. man, that's like critted! Uh, oh jeez, yeah, that is critted, but that's still not over yet. Oh 
<laughs> well, I guess we're dead. As he the hits you, and he it. does 24 points of damage in some oh, total. Oh, man. So as that's he... like... I'm a... uh -oh. And here's the worst part. As he hits you, it makes a massive, like almost like bullwhip crack as the flesh smashes into your face. That's like just breaks my vitality as well, it so I'll have to roll. It does, so roll for so... that whilst I write this up. Oh, I'm all right. You are all right indeed. With a 20 on your for fortitude, that's fine. However, I'm afraid you're going to have to roll again because this boy hit you with a nice and solid, beautiful super strength. Great. Oh, still all right. Still all right. Yeah. As you sort of slide back a bit, it's like, ah, that was really... That hurt a lot. As he just, like, waves his hand... Almost like as if he's like shaking away some pins and needles from from his fingertips, as his hand then recenters into a full fist. <laughs> oh man, I was holding back on that last one. <laughs> Here comes another, as that's the end of his turn. As we now come back to Blitz Cannon. All right. Uh, first, first action. Uh, do I think the like? Switching in and out of lightning form would maybe stop the bleeding. I assume not. Uh, roll power knowledge, or just roll it and hope for the best. It's up to you. Does lightning bleed? Does lightning bleed? That is the question. Use your brain. What is that roll for, by the way? That's power knowledge. Okay. You know that lightning does not bleed, so yes, it is possibility that if you transform into your lightning mode temporarily, you will be immune to bleed damage. But it'll come back once I... <laughs> yes, absolutely. You will return to your original form right. once the time limit is over. Um... All you need is a 15 on SP. All right, first first action is going to be an attempt to do that. Okay. <laughs> That's a fail. That is a fail, and I'm afraid that is your second action, I'm afraid. What? It, hang on. You, what? You used you, an action to roll okay, for your power knowledge. It, okay, sorry. Uh, in that case, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be doing that then. Um, no, I'm afraid I, you can't re-justify your rolls. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. That's right. I So uh, uh I will go down on their turn, basically. Potentially. Pot well no, you won't die. You'll yeah. you'll just go unconscious. Uh so it is now back to Vale. I mean not potentially. Definitely. You have one oh. HP left. That's if someone <laughs> can stop the bleeding before it is their turn, and it's right at the end of the rotation, because after after Vale, it is Nerve's turn. Well, I am sick I don't of this guy's going to stop the bleeding. No, no, if it's in, but Vale or Talos, mate. Talos, mate. But I'm sick of this guy on so many levels right now. I'm sick of him, and I'm going to... I am going... <clears throat> Oh, I'm. I'm thinking. I, I'm debating. Should I risk it? Should I risk after saying I'll never do it again? The recoil. <laughs> I mean, the recoil wasn't enough to even break your own vitality. So I mean, there yeah. is a possibility. No, if he can do twenty six damage to me, which is, I mean, he, I mean, digit count because I'm immune to all physical damage. But no, I don't know about nerve. Mm. I love the music for this background. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Sorry, it's just brilliant. Uh, this is just what Bartholomew is playing while yeah. he's in the. Bartholomew is dimension. playing this. I want to point out this is now canon in universe. Bartholomew, whilst in his own little pocket dimension, is just playing this kind of music on the keytar. I mean, you know really what? Screw it. Recoil. <laughs> Was that high enough to get it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's got a mess. Because you give your guy 15 plus, but okay. Yep, that messes. Uh, it's less that it misses, it's more that it is actually 
just forced back at you, so roll for the damage. You won't take the full damage because of your resistance, but you'll take the recoil from firing it. So ah, roll for it. I hit this guy. So that's, let's see, so I, how much damage did I do? It's 1.5 times. 16 so. damage. Okay, so... Very 2 plus 8. So roll your normal thing plus whatever half of the maximum possibility is. Okay, so I take 4 damage. Okay, so in some total, you take half of the damage that you dealt, so that's 10. He then redirects the blast at you, and what is your darkness resistance? Oh, six, 16. Okay, so you take 14 in total. Okay. Uh, as he just, like, as you blast him, he just immediately puts his other hand out, and then immediately is guided back at you. As the veil, you have taken your first amount of damage, as you have taken 14. This is, un this is unnatural to you. You're used to, fair enough, taking your own damage from the recoil, but you're never used to taking damage that is darkness itself. As you've Dude, these types of assholes. <laughs> As it mm. is now the turn of Nerve himself. Get back to the cards. I'll handle these guys. Hey, Dadget! Dadget! <laughs> <sighs> He's gone off on one of his little crazed missions to kill uh, whatever he that... wants. The, the nerve, nerve of, of that, that guy. guy. Oh, I just got his fucking name. That is brilliant. Perfect. Anyway, look, Void Child, I know that your kind likes to run away and hide in the darkness, so look, I'll give you one chance. Get out of here before I kill you. Because to be honest, as he then moves his hand as a small pink spark goes over one of his knuckles, you don't want to be hit by any of the attacks from me directly. Okay. Can I ask something? It was probably meant to be asked at the beginning. Is he wearing any jewelry or any kind of like, gauntlets? He is wearing one ring on his pinky finger. <laughs> I know what to do. I know what's happening. I know what you did there, Joe. Exactly what you did. Okay. Anyway. Oh, I will. Yeah. As he I then will. just, as he then just, he's basically giving you a chance to do something. Mm. You are either allowed to react to this moment now, or if he attacks you directly, you can then react to that. Let's see. This is his first action. I don't know if I can take him doing that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, no, I'm just gonna disappear into the shadows for a bit. Okay, so you're still gonna you're you're not you're just not gonna do anything basically in the equivalent of like dodging or anything or running away. Oh, I am. You're gonna wait for him to do something as well. What I'm saying. No, I'm going to disappear into the shadows again. Okay, whereabouts are you going? Like, are you taking the shadows with you? Yes. Okay, whereabouts are you going? Uh. Pretty much the other side. Away uh, from him. The opposite away from him. Wherever uh, so he is, the opposite direction. Down the center of the T-shaped uh, road. So you're going to go that way. Yes, but making sure that he's still in sight, because I have an idea. How far away are you willing to go? Like 70 meters. Okay. I just have to check something. Uh, okay. As that happens, he just sort of like continues on. All right, men, get back in the car. We're we'll leaving. These fools have done enough work. Oh, actually, before I've done as he lifts over his left hand and starts doing something with it, almost like as if there's strain and stress. Talos, you know this hand movement, this body language. 
as he is now trying to use your powers to bring down the building that you and Blitz Cannon are inside of. As he goes to roll his SP, what will you do? 17. Uh. So you can you can feel like what he's doing. You can see what he's doing. What are you going to do? Because you can now start hearing the entire building creak. Mm. Right, if I'm floating anyway. Uh... I mean, yeah, he can't specifically control you directly, but he can just make the entire building fall in on you. Yeah, and but I can just... I'm really worried about that. I mean, if he's just doing that to the building, then surely I can just grab Blitz Cannon and... Make the building crumble on top of him instead. Or I could. No, wait. I mean, he's I not inside start... of the building that you're in. He's very far away. Yes, however, due to my range and the building, I could just counter by lifting up the building as he's trying to bring it down and then just smash the bottom on top of him. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can you can attempt to basically do a thing like, I'm going to bring that down, no you, and then just basically remo like reverse the central fusual forces of the gravitational lift. And then apply it Over my rolls to... are pretty damn fragile. You have, so... to, you have to beat a 17. I will yeah, allow it at least with an 18. Hard, but, uh... My rolls ain't great, so... Oh, I do... Mm, I do have... An a world a void of imagination. He, one desire, one world, one building. Will he bring it down, or will it topple above his head? Well, the funny thing is, since you changed the rules of skill harmony, I had to replace one of my SPMAs with an advantage roll. You can do an advantage roll. So, I'll allow it. Yes. I shall try that, because this is important. 23. Well, the, fact that, the fact that Bartholomew has no idea what's going on. Not up. only is that above the, the requirement that I set, I said all minimum of 15, 18. You did it with above 5. Yes, you can basically do an Uno U U U U card on him and slam the building back down on him, if you do so wish. Yes, that is what I wish to do. In, ca in that case of which that you have done so, I will now roll a d100. Okay, as the building lifts up... As you have done so, and obviously you stated before so that you wish to keep you and Blitz Cannon safe, the building basically wraps around you guys, opens up, and then basically does a flip. As it then lifts out of the ground itself, goes behind you almost in a rotational fashion, and slams directly in the middle of this entire location, crushing... Nerve and the three JEOs in the center of this location. I don't know about Nerve, but I'm pretty sure the JEOs can't survive a building. Fair enough. With that being said, you are currently floating along with Blitz Cannon in midair, at least 20 meters above the ground. Now, we come back to, since it was Nerve's turn itself, it is now Talos, your turn. You are floating, and your friend is currently in a bad way, as he has been shot. Mm, he's bleeding. <laughs> That's he's not really bleeding. good at all. Uh, no. Can't, can't yeah. relate, honestly. Just can't relate. This whole bleeding situation is inside. tricky. So he... Is he actually unconscious? Like, I can't just wake him up. He's not unconscious yet. 
but he okay. is looking like as if he's fading in between the the current world that we live in and the one above all. Transform, damn it! Are you allowing your actions to go? I uh, hit uh, uh, at least one of them. Yes. Okay, so you're sacrificing a, a, a turn for Blitz Cannon to roll to transform. Mm. Blitz Cannon. Can I tra can I sacrifice one action? You can transform. indeed sacrifice one of your two actions. Yeah. Yes. Blitz Cannon. Will you comply with this? Yes, I will, and it'll we have work. Our answer. <laughs> the round from Blitz Cannon. As you, as you, as you say this, like, come on, Blitz Cannon, your entire body ignites into electricity. Your body is through no the longer... power of friendship. Through the yeah. power of friendship. <laughs> now, roll for your time limit, which I have no idea what your time limit dice is. Uh, hang on. Uh, where's the tab? Um. I'm so not used to people with no having time limits just because we're used to... <laughs> Everyone tries uh, to get rid of them as soon as possible. Yeah. Nobody likes the time limit system. Lightning. Uh, uh, if it starts at one thing uh, and every buff it goes up by one dice. Um, it... Where's the... Freaking. Um. Sorry for slowing things down here. That's alright, that's alright. I can't find it. You're new to this game. You're new to this game. I, I am very new. That's okay. Um. Um. Uh. Um. Oh, here we go. Um. 1d4. Okay, so uh, 1d4 plus every buff. How many buffs did you take? I took one. So it'd be a d6. Roll me a d6. Yes. Okay, so for the next yes. six rotations, you are fine. In other words, it has to come back to your turn. Well, it has to come back to technically Talos's turn because you did it during his turn. So in other words, every time it comes back to Talos's turn, it will take one minute or one Do rotation I? away. So heal four points of health. Since since he is since he is technically, if you control him to touch you, you can heal for the amount of points of health. Which yes, it would be four points of health. Since you can heal based off of lightning damage, you are now on to uh, on two points of damage in total, which means that you are at thirty three points of health in total. Uh, what is your what is your next action? Talos. Uh, I might as well just try and make a gravity zone like in the area where that building is to just further drive it into the ground since I can do like nine times gravity. Fair enough. Roll for it. That definitely works. Okay. It crunches and crunches as it crushes itself, grinding into the ground, as this multi-storied building is now reduced to a singular story object. As it is crunched and pressed and pressed and squished and grinded into the dirt, it is very obvious that whatever is underneath that is practically dust. As we now come back to... Do, do, do. Well, Toxie. Toxie, you are standing in front of Digit, who has just sort of like cracked his knuckles, tightened up his fist and ready for another attack, as then crunch, smash. What the hell? As the both of you look over, as that building has just crushed everything in the center of that. As the both of you oh, look oh back no. at each other. As he just goes... <laughs> <laughs> oh, your your teammates are gonna pay for this, but I don't mind having a quick, you know, quick one on one mano a mano. All right, this is uh, I'm I'm so sick of this guy. This guy punched me in my face, and that hurt. That did indeed so, hurt. That did indeed hurt, and I'm gonna use my practice on it, but that's why. <laughs> like, 
I'm gonna... I'm gonna, like, uh, make sure that he gets, you know, fucking inebriated. Gets off his tits. Oh no, he has the drunk brawler perk. <laughs> no! You're half right. Okay, so two two d twenties. Come on, don't let me down now. Okay, so that's uh twenty four. Yeah, that's twenty. Nice. Yeah, twenty four. Hey, it working. Nice. Could be the letdown. Okay, I will roll Constitution, which is plus three. Fourteen. Does that mean that he is inebriated, or does it? Uh, mean let's not? have a look at the inebriation. It's like uh. Oh no, target must roll 20 plus to succeed, succeed Ooh, against so this poison. So he is indeed infected with this poison. <laughs> what the... <laughs> what the hell is this? Uh, as he starts wobbling around. Right. As that is the end of your turn, as it's back round to Digit. You sure he's uh, not a morose drunk? <laughs> right. Okay. How long is this gonna last? Uh, Toxie, roll for the time limit. Okay. How much of the time limit is it? Do we have where it's like a D four, right? I believe yeah, it's, D4. it's a D four. It's a D four. I need to change that at some point. Well, one round. <laughs> Either way, he's still affected for this time, so. They'll be rolling disadvantage on this particular lovely number. Here we go. As he goes to throw a specific attack, try and beat a 14 with whatever okay, reaction so... you attempt. Uh, is it... Hmm. I won't be able to use my poison reactively on him, will I? Or? Uh, yeah. I can, okay. So I'm going to reactively cloud him in some fucking poison. See if I'm trying to... Roll it. I'm just going to belch at him some fucking poison so he can I'm sitting hit me in the face that hurt <laughs> you definitely do it uh yeah roll for your damage yeah what was my damage again I forgot yeah two, yeah it's 3d6s plus d4 that's right, good roll for that and whilst that's going on I'm just going to quickly have a look at this is there a limit to the amount of things I can make in the future <laughs> by technicality no okay and I'm just having a look at this real quick. Give me a fireplace made of bones. I don't have any like stuff to burn <laughs> other than like. I mean, you but deal, like you definitely like... deal 14 points of damage to this guy. Uh, however, as through the mist, he smacks you chopped into the face. His as you just hear <laughs> as into the side of your cheek as his right fist hammers down center into the side of your face. Ah, that's all my health! Thwack. Indeed it is, as he knocks your ass straight out. As that is a full clean 40, blimey. Oh my. If, ever, if everyone dies and Bartholomew is just left in the void for eternity. <laughs> Okay, so furniture. that you dealt 14 points of damage, so that means that it's. There we go. I'm just writing down his number. There we go. Okay, as we now come back to Blitz Cannon, you are now in your lightning form. You are not bleeding. Uh, there is a large building that has now been just turned into a large pile of rubble. You do not feel right. any any more. Relentlessness coming from that specific pile of rubble, but what will you do? Uh, how far away am I from Super Strength Boy? Um, uh, so you're floating, so around about uh, give or take 60 meters. Okay, uh, right let me now, just right now, Talos is making you float. Yeah. We all um, won. Let me let me see here. Uh oops. Um
okay within the range of the lightning so my lightning's range is currently 30 meters while my move speed is 29 um but i guess i can't really move normally um and talos has already used his reaction uh, no, Talos. Talos uh, if you tell Talos to do something, he can help you. But that would consider okay. your, one of your actions gone because you are asking him to do something for you. All right. Um, I will. Uh, I will ask him to send me over to uh, the building where Toxie is. Fair enough. Do you comply? Um. I'm just going to check something. Technically, since my return to sender ability can work on anything that isn't psychic or spatial, uh, and I'm obviously immune to his damage, could I technically throw him with my telekinesis? Like, just grab him and eat him into the building? Yes. I shall attempt that. Roll SP. And let's hope for something good. Twenty-five. Nice. I'm gonna roll a. I'm gonna roll a. Uh, okay. So oh. you like fastball special this dude like whoosh, as like a bolt of lightning is just flung into that building as a massive sort of like dust explosion happens as you are now directly behind Digit and by technicality in front of. Toxie, who has now just gone down. Unconscious yeah. as hell. Okay. Um, question. Uh, if I uh, successfully create a lightning weapon, uh, would I be able to attack with it as part of the same action, or no? No. Okay, in that case, uh, I will just try and... Uh, Shock this Emma. Yeah, I'm just gonna try and put him in a chokehold. No, oh, okay. Uh, oh I guess yeah, place a chokehold. I guess either roll grapple or roll. Actually, you know what? Uh, grapple, SP, or Dex. It's up to you. Okay, um, I will go with SP because it's the same as Dex. Okay, and I've got to roll disadvantage because he's still a new breed. Oh, no. Well, the uh, the Ben Lock is back. Oh got... my god! Don't worry, I have he, to. He literally can fail to, anyway. I have to yeah, still, I have to still roll this. If I fail this, he's basically doing nothing. Hey. Awesome, he's failed oh. it. He needs. To, he needed to have gotten a fifteen or above in the second roll. Okay, okay, he definitely throws that punch and he hits you, but that's worse. He does lightning damage to himself. <laughs> he takes four points of lightning damage, so already good. Then you grab him, which does another four points of lightning damage, and yep. you're you're currently holding on to him. Yep. Okay. That is my turn. Okay, nice. So you have hold of him. That is your turn, and it is now back down to the veil. So veil, you've just seen this entire building just be dropped on this mf -er. Well, there's only one be pretty thing to dark do. in there, actually. Check if he's alive, and hopefully, it, or if not, at least unconscious. Uh, you can't see whether it, from here, even with your dark sense, you can't see if anything is alive or dead. But you can definitely tell whether or not it's a still normal if it, is it it's there. stillness uh there is definite stillness let's put it that I way i mean can't actually text me again would be able to sense a heartbeat because it is that's what i mean solid uh, did i did i stutter well i did just there uh <laughs> uh, yes you did joe <laughs> definite um guys i just realized something we kind of yeeted a building onto the thing we were supposed to not break. Yeah, or I was gonna you. say. I was oh, gonna no, no, no. say. I'll was repeat it? myself it was, for Sam's the... sake. Definite stillness. Digit would... has the device, not Nerve. Nerve had the device. Digit gave yes. the device to Thank Nerve. 
Yes. With a yeah. digital wrapped around his arm. Yes, yeah, and he, he gave handed the handcuff over. over to Nerve. Nerve was the one oh. who was Okay, oh. I have to retrieve it. You have to retrieve it. Well, there's only one thing to hope do. For the I'm gonna go... Of course I'm gonna go under there and then just void gate the dead corpse as well as the device. <laughs> Uh, roll SP, there. just, uh, and the requirement that you need, just high enough to get a, a, a void gate. Ten. I shall allow it. <laughs> it is a ten. I'm kidding. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't have said anything. Anything to have changed that. You got a sixteen, my guy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, so you you swallow up. You swallow up what you believe is the case and the corpse that was a part of it, as you now have a new roommate. Uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> Bartholomew, you now, you now have a new roommate. Careful, I've set up some nice beds. Uh, that, that can't really make comforters because you know everything's made of bones. But you know we got some nice friends. Uh, what does Bartholomew see as his new roommate? Might I ask? Yeah, mush, cloth, plastic, metal, shunts, and a lot of definite amounts of dust and rubble as it passes through that thing. Yeah. Is there a briefcase? I mean, there could have been. Bartholomew, uh, would you like to fuck. roll uh, an investigation check on this corpse? Or yes, mush sure. that was once living? And... Roll for it. Can I ask, can I roll, can I roll a history? <laughs> or something to see if I know any time travelers? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you as you, as you sort of like look around on this mush, it is a lot of mush and a lot of gravel and a lot of dirt and dust and yeah, you're not sure what is this at all. As for you, Vale, that is your first action. What would you like your second action to be? Uh, okay. I mean. I really want to do this song just because I can. Because it'd be some, it'd be somewhat cool. And why not? I'm going to become a giant, a, an eighty foot shadow man. Okay. Just, just more or less, just to try and sketch it. More or less, just to intimidate. A As Trump. an intimidation ploy. Roll for it. Digit. Ooh. Well, an eighteen. I shall roll for digits nerve. No, oh, wait, should I actually roll intimidate? No, that no, that's fine. Also, Bartholomew's probably trying to make like a trash can and As he sort of like is like being <laughs> choke holded by lightning and he sort of looks up and is like Okay, I see that I definitely uh, uh <laughs> I see that I've I've miscalculated here. Uh, uh, he is no longer inside of your chokehold. In fact, it's no longer inside of your vicinity, Blitz Cannon. You don't sense cool. him so anywhere, just... Veil. Vale. He just yeeted himself you off. Sense him. Pretty much. You have no idea where you can sense him. Void sense is useless in a specific circumstance. Mm. He's just gone. He's just gone. You are now outside of the combat as no more living subjects are within your current vicinity. What do you wish to do? Um, oh. Blitz Cannon, I'll give you the first go. Right. Uh, so before I drop out of lightning mode, you still got uh, I would like to minutes. make. Yep, I would like to make sure that Toxie is all good. Uh, do you touch Toxie at all during the time that you're checking them over? No. Good. <laughs> but yeah, they are, that they was are still the breathing. Thing. They are still breathing. Yes. They're just unconscious. If, if they need, like, medical attention or something, I'll shout at Talos. Um, which I'm going to do anyway, but for different reasons. Okay. Uh, so yes, uh, having made sure that Toxie is still, you know, probably looking like they're going to pull through. They are uh, breathing, yes. I am going to uh, look around for something I can use to staunch the bleeding on myself uh, as soon as I return to uh, not lightning form. 
Okay, so you're going to have a look around, I guess, roll investigation whilst that's going on. Talos, you've just been shouted to make sure that uh, thing is okay. Uh, what do you wish to do, Talos? I guess I'll float on down there. You notice that Blitz Cannon just zipped off and is looking around almost as fast as a freaking speedster, lightning bolting around all over the different rooms to try and find something. However, you do see Toxie's body as you were as you were explained that they are unconscious and they need to be well removed from this location. I look peaceful in my pajamas. <laughs> You basically look like as if you just went five rounds in a slap tournament from Russia, as your entire left side of your face is swollen to heck. But other than that, yeah, you do look kind of peaceful. Okay. Um, what I'm really good for is transplanting limbs and stitching things up. So, yeah, I'm not really great in this situation. Okay, what are you going to do in the terms of the fact that these enemies have just been taken care of and you've been asked to lift them away? Uh, but uh, it's not like there's going to be anything left of the enemies. Okay, Vale, what are you doing? I'm going to move my 80 foot limbs over for Blitz Cannon and Toxie and just put them into the void. The void, my void, my, my void realm. Okay, well, whilst you're doing that, Blitz because... Cannon, you do find some toilet paper. That's the best that you can find. Right. Well, I guess uh, when I. Um, when I get freaking void gated, uh, I'll take some of the scraps of cloth from the mush. No. Okay, fair enough. No, I mean, I mean, think of it like this: you will never detransform in my realm. That is a hundred percent true. It. That is a hundred percent true. Once you go into there, you're thinking, "Oh shit, I'm gonna run out in about two, three, and about more than that time passes, and you're still in this. In fact. Your body feels calm. Your lightning doesn't feel fluctuating and almost like on the brink of about to dissipate. You feel peace. In fact, you feel nothing. As for you, Talos, do you also go into the Void Realm? No. Okay. I feel like I need to explore the, the rubble Once you've Once you've sent these two in and it is just you and Talos. Vale, do you and Talos commune at all during this rather high-paced moment? You have to drop the building on him. Uh, he was going to kill Blitz Cannon, so yes. Do you know I've dropped it slightly to the right? His hand wouldn't be crushed. The building would have fallen on him regardless. I mean, look at it. It's practically dust. Much like the device we were meant to retrieve. Are you sure about that? Yes. Well, if it wasn't that tough, then it couldn't have been that useful. Mm. The veil just kind of looks away at that stupidity. Talos and Vale, what do you do now as suddenly you get a message on your communications devices? Shrink down so I can actually, so the phone is phone size again. You've been sent a message by B. Tutla as you have been ordered to go to a specific set of coordinates. Well. I might check the rubble just one last time. Just in case. Talos, what about you? I'll lift up the rubble. As you lift up the rubble, 
And you have a look around, there's nothing really other than a bundle of corpses and fairly destroyed vehicles. Hmm. I assume they don't have anything, but I will try and roll investigation. Fair enough. What about you, Vale? Can I also do that? Yes, you can. That's a seven. Seven and a twenty. Uh, Talos, you find fairly damaged, but still, nonetheless, you find three pistols and three SMGs. Still fairly damaged, as I said before, but basically six weapons, nonetheless. Hmm. I think I'll probably just pocket the ammunition. Fair enough. I'll leave the guns there in case he wants to, yeah, avoid getting them. You've got about, well, around about nine magazines uh, of SMG ammo and nine magazines of pistol ammo. Cool. Awesome. Right, and what would you like to both do now? Say... Getting in the car. Yes, and then try and think of a valid excuse for what happened. There's the two you know, of you there's... get in the car and you start driving off. Again, the two of you are alone in this car at the moment. What do the two of you say to each other as, as there is silence and, again, <laughs> it is pitch black out at night? I might let Bonnie out at this point. Trying to bring the building down onto him anyway, right? Bartholomew, you were suddenly allowed, like, suddenly, like, spat out of the gate and suddenly on the back seat of the car. <laughs> What's going on? Did we do it? Mm. Not as such. No. <laughs> Remember that clump of meat and wiring I sent in. Yes, the, the stuff I was trying to sweep up currently, yes. Yes, that's what we retrieved. We were sent mm. here to retrieve undamaged. It's not looking great, then. No. Roll investigation, but, you know, Ben... Yes, but it's canon. Roll investigation, because you uh, didn't actually roll when you... um. Said that you were trying to just tear off a bit of cloth. Okay. Continue. As you drive through into the night, <laughs> you finally arrive at the location with heavy hearts and very full stomachs for destruction you are you find that you are outside of none other than just some kind of church can I go in then? Well, I, I guess we might as well go in. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. As the three of you <clears throat> walk on in and open the large wooden doors, you see a, well, beautiful hall, perfectly symmetrical in every way multiple statues all over depicting different saints and beings and gods throughout the ages. But right in the middle of this church, right at the back, is a picture depicting a being with no face shining a light upon some kind of man and woman. As it seems to be like as if they are acceptant of this light as it is oddly ominously quiet the doors slam behind you you then see 
one of about four to five people in these chairs, these long benches. One of them gets up. It is the butler. He walks into the middle of the room, of this large hallway, of this large church, and he says to you, Ah! So I take it that it's done, then. Yes. And how did uh, it go? Quick question. Are all of us out of the void gate, or...? No, it is just these three for now. I mean, I am... Trust me, I will, vo I will open the void gate as soon enough. <laughs> I don't want to be the only one having to deal with us. So, where is the device? The suitcase? Well, at this point, I will void gate. So specifically, a uh, part, the mo like a uh, half of the chunk of meat is the dead agent. And all of the machine parts flop onto the ground. As you, the again, void like, gate remains open. They're basically so like that the others can look out. Uh, Toxie is still unconscious, and um, Talos is fault. He dropped a building on it. Uh, as like the sort of gate opens and sort of like you start peering out for its cannon, you can suddenly start feeling time is resuming again for you, and you start feeling like almost like as if your body is starting to agitate. So it's like the closer you get to that door doorway between the current realms, the more you start feeling that your time is slipping away from you. Just yell yeah, that's fine. Just had to make myself known. Fair enough. <laughs> as you further, as you further step back, as the mush, all of it, I want to point out because it's all very much together, just flops out into the center. So, that's the. Uh, that is who exactly? Agent named Nerve. I believe has the power to manipulate superpowers. Right. Yes, and see. where is the case? Talos, would you like to take that? Well, you see, Agent Nerve. Blitzcount and I were, we were in a building, and we wanted to bring the building down. Cut to the short part of it, please. We don't have much time. He was in the path of the building, and so when the building came down, it came down on top of him. So you're telling me that this mush is not only the remains of Nerve the agent that is one of the two agents that I told and warned you about, but also that this is the current carrier, or was the current carrier, of the very suitcase I told you to be very ever so careful with. He did handcuff it to himself, and uh, he could manipulate our powers. As he starts looking up and takes a big breath in, so, is that an excuse? That sounds it like an excuse, an quite frankly. You asked for what happened. I gave you an answer. So, I have my doubts about this, but I'm assuming that you haven't found the suitcase, or even what the suitcase may have been holding inside of it because of this mush that you have brought before me is perhaps the only thing that is left from your wreckage. Well, I assume that there would be some way of separating the device from the flesh. You then suddenly hear a voice from one of the others that is that are sitting in on these benches. Just get up. As you just sort of see like this guy with spiky up hair, really messy grey and sort of blonde-ish hair, scars all over his face, short-ish sort of like leather jacket, again torn shirt, and he just goes, "All right, can I uh, can I just say something?" Uh, I'm bored. 
This this guy, right? He dropped a building on him. What do we really need this thing for? I mean, ugh. look, the we haven't even checked the body. The butler then looks over at this man and says, "Lord War, please, I said that I would, I would be the one in charge of this situation. You do not have to worry yourself with such runs." All right, look. If you don't want me to touch it, sure, fine, whatever. But if you're gonna get it, just check it yourself. Very well. It's nothing else. At least brought you a body you can get superpowers from. He then looks at you like, but the butler guy looks at you with like the most evil eyes ever, and starts to have a look through the, let's say the uh, the wreckage mush. of the mush. <laughs> I'm now going to roll. The severity check. Oh, as he looks, as he looks through it, things. he notices that he pulls out from this mush a large chunk of a suitcase. It is obvious that this is broken off as he continues to look through the mush. Another piece, a handle, a piece of metal, the lock, and eventually... Something starts glowing. Roll me survival. Specifically, Veil and Bartholomew. Eh. <laughs> no, this is bad. Why can't I? Vo Damn, the one time I can't void gear that. Uh -oh. Oof. Eleven. As Bartholomew, you feel sick. Down to the bones, you feel aching and pain that actually brings you to your knees as you feel shuddering. I want to point out, Talos, you do feel kind of a bit ill, but nonetheless, it's sort of fine, but you do sense that there is a certain amount of danger to whatever that, that has just happened. As for you, Vale, you feel pain all throughout your body, but you're sort of handling it a bit more well. Like, that ain't right. Mm, get out of the way from me. Almost kind of a... It's almost like a pain that is almost warning you, rather than a pain that is excruciating. So and... as you see, like, the, the shadows, like, shiver away. Mm. Like, every time the symbiote, like, hears loud noises or is near fire, that's the same way I look right now. Do, do you make, like, a hissing sound like a cat? Like a... As he brings out from the mush blood... And dust covered a symmetrical looking object, a cylinder that go gets smaller in segments, almost like as if it's a double ended battery of exact mo points either side. Almost like as if it's got two plus points either side. It's this very large battery, large enough to be at least half the size of a car battery. As he then lifts it up, it starts glowing, and he then then says, They have procured it. It seems undamaged, sir. What should we do with it? Well, that's not my problem, although I ain't touching that. What do you think, Pestilence? As then another man, but only the voice, but you can hear it coming from another one of them then starts to say something. Perhaps we might have one way of placing it away from the others. Nubia, lad, and pass it here. Thermethronel. The butler then walks towards him. And a man with some kind of strange mask stands up in a perfect suit then opens up a pocket dimension and the butler throws in the object into it it then closes I have to commend you I honestly didn't think that you would have been able to pull this off so well done however we cannot allow this insubordination to go unheeded 
We did say that we did indeed require it to be inside and unharmed. Inside of its own little casing, if you will. The suitcase wasn't exactly important to us, it was what was inside. It kept it defended, safe, if you will. You get the idea. So the suitcase did its job. Relatively well, I'd say so. But again, we asked you to bring it to us completely unharmed. We will have to have it checked out to make sure that it is undamaged, of course. But we are yet to know of that truth. But nonetheless, you did bring it to us. And if it is undamaged and still yet usable, given the fact that its radiation seems to have affected all of you, we will indeed pay you. Your payment will be sent to you within the next two or three days. I should introduce myself, I assume. My name is Pestilence. I am the head of the Horsemen of the Apocalypse. That over there, who rashly had invited himself to this conversation, is War. And these other two associates beside me, well, Pollution and Famine. Thromethromel, on the other hand, is my sworn servant. Some call him the butler, but it is absolutely up to you. Now, we have only two more things that is needed to be done before the end is nigh. For the entirety of all of the superhuman society. Are you okay with the destruction of these great tyrants, or some call them great heroes, titans of power, whatever you want to call them, are you okay with their destruction, Vale, Bartholomew, and I believe they call you Talos, is that still okay with you? I have literally no moral compass. <laughs> I'm more than happy. I have not yet formed an opinion on heroes. Well, at least we have something that we can work with. Very well. Then, for now, I shall at least give you this. Right now, we are currently building upon something absolute. We need a scientist specifically who is capable enough of being able to understand this device. We might have a couple of them, but for the time being we need to know absolutely whether or not they can or cannot deal with this kind of case. There are three minds of this world who are possible, or at least capable enough, to be able to understand the inner workings of this device. It is known as the Anamon Battery. Almost a pan-dimensional energy converter. That battery that you just saw leaks Anamon radiation, but it can convert it into any type of energy that is required, meaning that it could power anything. The output of that could entirely power the world if every single electronical connection of all of the energy grids were connected, and then some. It is the most powerful device that has ever been created, and now we are in its possession. Or should I say, it is in our possession. Truly one does not know with a piece of technology as devastational as that. It has enough power to destroy the planet. Or at least to reshape it, similar to the original explosion almost a hundred years ago. We need you to find one of the two or three scientists. One of them, we have no idea where they are. We are under the belief that they have completely gone off the radar. There are, however, two minds of this world that still would know how to reverse engineer this device. One, that is within a city, but would probably not work with us. It would take some time to truly get him on our side. 
and the other would without a doubt help us. But the journey would be rather difficult, and the location even more so. What do you say? I'd say let's do it. It's... Hmm. Why not? It will be fun. Then which one will you go for? Vale, you often seem to have an opinion. I've seen some of your lot hanging around a lot of different places. Well, up until recently, anyway. I don't see many of your lackeys anymore. <clears throat> There's a reason for that. <laughs> I'm sure. And I'm sure someone else other than myself would care. But what I care about is your opinion on this particular matter. You seem to have control over certain underworld powers, whether it's financial or socialistic. So what do you think? I really wish I knew, because I could barely understand what you were saying. Hmm. Very well. Either way. Okay, Sam, basically what it is, is, uh... Almost, no, it's it's the voice mod he's using. It's very low on my microphone. Yeah, it is tiny. a little difficult to... I, mean, I, I heard it just Forgive fine. Me. I can um, play it louder if you wish. Yeah, that'd help. What was yeah, he asking yeah. me to, to have an opinion about? So basically, uh, let, let me try the Feynman method here just to make sure that I understood. Um, the the thing is, uh, like the yeah, the thing is like a special animite reactor thing that could power the world. Uh, they want someone to reverse engineer it so they can make more, uh, or destroy it. Who knows? Um, and the uh, the only people who can who they believe can reverse engineer. One of them has gone off the radar, so no chance of finding him. One of them will not be happy to work with, but is easily accessible. And one of them would gladly work with us, but he's very hard to get to. So basically the question is, do we go for the low hanging fruit that'll be difficult in the long run or the difficult in the short term, easy in the long run option? Oh, yeah, absolutely, that was, that was spot on, my dude. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't we okay, literally much. just um? This guy's just saying this to me from the vo from the void. Well, I'm gonna say for the sake for the sake just of it, translating it, it for me. I'm gonna say for the sake of it, it's like, you know, he he he's helped you as as a player understand it. So I'm, I'm you know I'm fine with that kind of meta knowledge because it's not meta. It's just helping you explain it. I didn't I didn't know that the uh, voice modulator was so quiet. Uh, I've amped it up, but yeah, okay. it's just on my ad. <laughs> That was a bit on, on my end, too. No, yeah. it would have been on almost all of your ends because the, I did have it turned down. Uh, for instance, in this particular situation, it's now at 75. It should be. So, uh, That's however, better. normally this is on 65, and beforehand it was on, like, 20. So if it was quiet, I am, I am, I apologise. Ah. Uh, it's obvious. What shall we go for? I mean, we did just uh, free a guy who has like mind powers of some sort. I mean, I wasn't even going. I wasn't even talking about that. I was talking about well, going to the one do you that say wants that? Do you say that out loud, by the way, Bartholomew? Uh, yeah, sure. You know, I I feel I feel as though we could use their assistance to, if someone's not willing. It's, it's surefire way to um, coerce mm. them into be willing, perhaps. Just a fart. That is indeed You don't even trust the man who has the powers. True, although he has come round to our way of thinking now that he understands what our goals are. So perhaps utilizing him in this way would actually be rather helpful to all of you. Of course, that's if you wish to coax the easier option. You could just get all of them. 
I should probably tell you where they are. Currently, the closest one, Dr. Hamehel, she is currently in the city, but she is a normal citizen and probably would not want to work with villains who are trying to destroy the country. There is then, however, the other doctor, Dr. Spectro. He is unbeknownst as to where exactly he is right now. And finally, there is one last one. Professor Hamei. He is a rather dangerous scientist who has been locked away for the last ten years. Dr. Hermey is, uh, where should I put it, rather eccentric. However, he does believe in the destruction of many of the forms of super society. He would definitely help us, and as a matter of fact, him and I were old prison buddies. Do you, know, do you know of the concept of a front? I believe I do, but in this particular context, you will have to rather fill me in with this particular form. Well, in the drug business, we often buy buildings and use them as a front. Front part being a perfectly normal business back part being where we both make and distribute drugs. It'd be an easy concept to deal with, with the citizen. Just say we're a business, get a sign, get some employees, or us. Just say, oh, we, we find your expertise on line. We thought you could be great for the company. We're developing this new source of energy. That would be great if it weren't for one problem. The device itself emits that radiation. None of you would be able to carry it around with you, expecting that she'd do it. And even worse, if she suddenly turned around and Dr. Thame were to want to see it, she would have to come here, or to one of our locations. If she saw any of us, she may very well turn back. My face isn't exactly... Oh. Unknown. I mean, there's a thing called lead. You just case it in lead. That perhaps could work. That However, removing it from it would not exactly be easy. Well. Oh, we'll figure out a way. There's more than one way to skin a cat, I've discovered in my business. And what of you two? You still have yet to speak about this matter. My, my opinion is that we go for the easiest one first, if we decide to go to Mont for multiple, then, you know, as, as, as we boiled out, um, uh, so they pin them all down, per se. Hmm. Very well. I will have to remind you, however, that this is not exactly an easy task. Oh, I should actually remind you. Professor Hum, or should I say, Hum Mayra, a.k.a. Professor Hermé, yes, he prefers a short abbreviation of both of the first and last of his names. Don't exactly know why that is. But Mr. Herm, or Professor Hermé, actually is rather intelligent. He once worked with the Covenant of Steel Man to specifically build and design power armors and technology that would be able to be capable of fighting against superhumans, anomalies, and Huskonians. The madman, on the other hand, we kind of grew fond of each other in the terms of our ideologies. He wanted to destroy humanity in the terms of superhumanity, as he believed that humans were worshipping us as gods. I, on the other hand, wished to destroy them for similar reasons. Us believing that super beings are gods is ridiculous. Power is power, regardless of where it comes from. But it's all about trust. Knowledge, capability, 
It's not just about whether or not you are the power of the sun or the world's strongest man. So because of this, he and I go way back. But this is the problem. As I said before, he and I were prison buzzy, bro, the prison buddies. He is currently locked away in Garrison's Zeta Max prison. Meaning that if you were to try and get him, you would have to break down into the most locked away place in all of this world. And that is I mean, that where... sounds like a lot, a lot of effort and a lot of things that could go wrong. Don't think we'll do that. And that is where we shall end this session. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I kind of messed up on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is that is that. So you guys have that was mission that today. happened bad. That happened bad. <laughs> You are so damn lucky that I, I rolled the final severity roll to see whether or not the device was destroyed. Yeah, it was not. Oh, was this nice. is a stupid yes. battery. It is the world's most powerful battery. Uh, it was it was actually once inside of another piece of technology, but you guys won't really necessarily find out about that unless if you actually start digging up for more questions. But either well, either way, is the world's most powerful battery. Uh, and it is one of a kind because the scientist who built it mysteriously died not long after it was finished and it and was it landed in the hands of the government's organizations of the agency and the military's defense uh, sectors both of which were being under the control and the guidance of agents now fun fact had you guys had not become a bit too public in that last part in the last session, there would have only been one agent during that fight. And I can now gladly say, would you like to know the the abilities of that last dude? Please. Go for it. Okay. Sure. Well, I will tell you, but if anyone uh, if anyone else would like to know, I'm afraid they will have to find out later, as we are going to stop streaming now, but continue recording. Thank you very much for listening and watching to the stream. Take care, and as always, ciao ciao for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining, my lovely players. Take care. Bye-bye.